Hello and welcome to episode 72 of the Talk Nintendo podcast. I am one of your hosts, Casey Gibson, and joining me this fine evening, the one, the only, Mr. Perry Burkham. Ahoy hoy! Hey there, Smithers. Smithers, Even though you're Mr. Burns, Burns, but I guess that makes Miss me Whalen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Casey? I am. Uh, I'm doing just fine. How are you? I'm fantastic. I we are living in the golden land, golden age of of amazing indie games coming out on our little Switch device here. So I have just been crazy playing uh, some nice offerings on the. On the old Switch, so. And here I am. Haven't even touched my Switch in days. Yeah, seriously. I'm on, I'm you, on the 3D yeah. boat. The 3DS boat. Yeah. The 3DS barge, baby. There's room for more. Yep. He said he was going to do it, and he did. Yeah. But it, more on that later. It, it's very strange. Um, normally in the morning, you know, my, my routine, I, I make my coffee, you know, brush my teeth, all that jazz grab my switch and uh hit the road you know but this last week and change i haven't been bringing it to work with me so you know the 3ds just fits right in my pocket there and it's like i I always feel like i'm missing something you know like i'm like you know when you're you tap each pocket you're like all right i got my wallet phone Mm -hmm. it it's it's a crisis every morning perry Mm -hmm. i hear you well because we're so packed with games on this fine episode I think we should dive right into, we should dig right into one of them. Yes, sir. And uh, digging you've been doing. I have been, for I have been digging in Steam World Dig. Ooh-wee. Yeah, the, uh, the, the uh, quote unquote pride and joy of, uh, of, uh, what, what, what's the of the Steam uh, World? I- image and image and form <laughs> of their games? I'm thinking of uh, they got the new Thunderful. Oh yep yep yep. Yeah, we get. We, I guess we didn't cover that in our news, but yeah, with a uh, Zoink and image and form, uh, like joined forces. I mean, they didn't completely merge, but they uh, they're under the same Thunderful Games now, which is pretty cool. It's yeah. thunder. It's thunderous and wonderful. <laughs> now I'm wondering how much um, crossover, if any, because I, I believe you know they're still going to be their separate entities. Yes, they are still they're separate going, entities. But they're going to be sharing a s- office space, I believe. And yeah. I believe um, it's going to be more like on the d- distribution and publishing side, right? Is that sort of why they're coming together? Maybe. Totally. So. I yeah. Yeah, that's so exciting. But, Seriously? But like you said, you yeah. can't, uh, if they're in going to be in the same space, you know, obviously they're, even if it's just like, hey, come look at this, you know, uh, some pointers or no, what do yeah. you think I mean, of this? I, it's I, all benefits. Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be yeah. uh, a, a good thing for both people. But enough about that. Tell me about Dig Perry. I will. But real quick. <laughs> but no. Dig, <laughs> hopefully <laughs> Dig It to the Man comes out. Ooh, you <laughs> or dirty stick it dog. To, stick it to the bot. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, SteamWorld Dig, the original one. This isn't Dig 2. This is the original Dig. Uh, came out on Switch. Now, this is a game I, I have completed uh, four and now five times. Nerd. Uh, all on the 3DS. It's just this. Uh, so, Dig, it's this. I guess they call it a Metroidvania. Um and I suppose it is, but it's really different. Uh, it's a different kind of where you're digging down. Everyone knows what dig is, but it's it's this. It has this amazing mechanic of digging um, and upgrading your axe or your drill to dig better and to dig into new places and uh, faster. And then it also adds in some uh, traversal uh, things like wall jumping or double jumping or uh, some abilities. You know. Now, the thing is, is this game, it's one of those games where you can beat it in a day, like I did. I beat it in a day um, because, it, like, four hours. I ha- Actually, I hit it right at four hours. Um, and it's it's so replayable and so much fun. And I guess my, my uh, proof is that I've played it five times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think, I don't, it's probably the only game in the past 
five years that I've played five times through. Has to be. I can't even um, think. I mean, outside of like the obvious link to the past, like Zelda's, Super Mario yeah. World, you know, like games that have been out for twenty plus years. You yeah. Know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, granted, it takes four hours to beat it. Oh so yeah, it, it's, it's small. a brisk, a brisk uh, yeah. offering. You know. So this is why I think it's so smart of them. Uh, you know, that's why I, I loved it. Like, I love that size of game because it's one of those things where I'm really, really addicted to it while playing. It has this amazing addict, addictive quality where um, it, you just can't stop and, and you really want because it's like, I'll go back down just one more time and harvest, you know, my gatherings, you know, to get more gold so I can upgrade one more time. But then, of course, then that upgrade puts you, you do so close to exactly. something else. And you're and like, you're like, oh my goodness, I just got a new axe. Now I need to go down and. You know, exactly. I gotta test this so, puppy out, and you know I'm only a couple, you know, uh, yeah, it, one more trip away from another upgrade. Uh, uh, okay, no, yeah, I, I know exactly. That feeling. It, it's a fantastic feeling. I'm honestly, when you can't put a game down, that's a great feeling. Like I don't care what it, because it's like okay, I have to put it down, but now I can't wait to get back to it. You know, um, now uh, this is on Switch. Uh, one thing that I didn't think about before you know being used to having playing it on 3ds um you the screen is bigger like not just bigger like physically like to scale but you can see way more of the map oh really um, yes than on 3ds that's awesome um, yes yes it's it's amazing and also the graphics are I'll need to do a side a side by side or something, but they they really are like HD like different gra- like obviously they're different, but they they seem like they're even like different designs almost hmm. like they really are like almost like HD re like drawing. I'm sure. I mean, I know it's the same as the Wii U uh, and the uh, you know all the other console releases, but no. Wait, I are just, you talking I'm saying, about handheld? Because like you said, having that beautiful screen on the Switch, it definitely makes those colors pop. You know. Okay, yeah, especially no, when it's, you consider it's like, the 3DS. Screens. Oh, I mean, imagine, yeah, I mean, this is the game running from 3DS to Switch, so it looks so much better. Um, besides not having that delicious stereoscopic 3D, um, which I I did love about the first game, I really do love that. Um, and it did not, and it was not by any means ugly or anything like that on the original. It was looked great, um, but it just it looks lot more vibrant and fresher on the on the switch so um that was a big thing i was like oh wow i can see more i can like this kind of changes the gameplay a little bit like for the better because you know i can just see more uh you can see hazards better uh, you can play better um also the seamless putting it from handheld to to the screen pro controller every oh just it's it's a per it works perfect uh, like you'd expect um and it plays just as good as it always has ever been. Um, having played through Dig 2 and coming back to Dig 1... Now, to be honest, and I said this when I when I was playing through Dig 2, I, I do not believe there's a huge difference between Dig 2 and Dig. Um, I obviously like a lot of quality of life improvements. Like, I mean... Uh, maybe not quality of life. Maybe that's not the best thing. But maybe they kind of enhance what they have... But there's not any drastic changes. They, they polished uh, it up a little bit more, you know. Not yeah, to say I mean, it was originally yeah. unpolished, but you know what I mean. They it, just fine tuned yeah. it. Yep, it's about three times as long as Dig, um, and it has uh, it has the it has that new cog system to where for for upgrading your upgrades. So it's like another step of upgrading. Um, but other than that, it's not nothing like crazy different, and I I don't mean that in any sort of a bad way i just mean it's really not that different uh and i think that works back to to dig um in a favor favorably where i feel like if if you've played steamroll dig 2 and you haven't played dig you should totally go back and play dig because it's great um uh and you're not you know you're not and of course also if you're gonna like it's fine to skip dig 2 you know because you don't you don't need to know what dig is to play dig 2 but I'm just saying it's one of those things where it's good because you can go back and play if you want. Um, but yeah, it's and, and because it's over so quickly, which that might be kind of a turnoff for some people because they want more content for their buck, you know. But it just it's a quick playthrough and it's really satisfying and fun while you're playing it. And, you know, I'll definitely play through it. It's probably going to be like a yearly to like, you know, 
bi-yearly, bi-yearly thing, you know, because that's how it's been. Um, and uh, it's like I almost feel like it's way easier to pick up than Dig 2 again. Like I would play Dig again before I played Dig 2. Because of the investment, you know what I mean? Yeah, where, yeah. You know, like that small have commitment. Hours. Exactly, exactly. So, and you know, and so that's where uh, that's that's where I lie with with everything. Uh, so I love to death both games. Uh, they're fantastic games uh, from Image and Form, and uh, it holds up great today. Dig, and now you have Dig and Heist and Dig Two on the Switch. It is the ultimate machine. Boom. For uh, image and form games. Now they just got to release their DSi game that is in the Steam World series that I've never played. And I wonder how that game is. And I don't want to download it on my 3DS. <laughs> <laughs> because of, you know, because I'm not like you playing 3DS games. Yeah, man. I, a whole slew of 3DS games. Um, and yeah. you know what? I might as well start out with the one that would make most sense to talk about after Steam World Dig. And that is arms. No, uh, Steam World Heist. <laughs> Steam World Heist, my uh, my favorite. See, you wouldn't agree, but this is m- the best game in the Steam World series. I would a hundred percent agree with you. You're a copycat. Matter of fact, yeah, I was gonna say matter of fact. I believe I was paving that path, baby. Now. This game is a uh, strategy RPG, you know, tactical RPG, so it is very, very, very different than the Dig games. Um, mm-hmm. and it really is. It's it's extremely different. Yeah, so... the Gameplay-wise. The, the plot here is that um, I believe it's like 100 years or however many years after Dig, and the Earth has um, exploded. It's destroyed, you know? So now all of these Steam bots have sort of uh, just relegate like all right we got to get in our ships and we got to go into space otherwise you know there's nowhere else to live so um on the edge of this galaxy you know there's these uh, steam bots and they're sort of i think they're called scrappers um or scal i, I want to say salvagers because i've been playing xenoblade but um you know th- that's just sort of their thing and they're making uh, ends meet but essentially some trouble comes around and um they realize at this point that if, if this trouble keeps going on, it's going to catch the eye of a real big problem, you know what I mean? Like, of even, uh, a, you know, a stronger fraction of people are going to come in. So it's like, I, we need to nip this in the bud so that we don't get destroyed by these other people, you know? Mm-hmm. And that sort of lays the, uh, the groundwork for the story. But as we were saying, it's a strategy RPG. So it's a 2D strategy um, RPG game where you have either three or four party members um, and you are going into these randomly generated missions where, uh, you know, the goal varies uh, a little bit here and there, but generally it's sort of like go in there and eliminate a target or, you know, go blow up something and then get out of there, you know, go collect the, the, the epic loot which is behind a door that you need to blow up generators. You know, so it's... More or less like a pretty simple, I'd say, um, main objectives, you know. But obviously, there are going to be plenty of enemies to deal with. And uh, part of the appeal is trying to have all of your characters survive while also collecting the loot that's sort of scattered around the level. Uh, This loot can turn into, um, you know, currency to purchase guns and upgrades and such. Or they could be guns themselves. So... You know, you always sort of want to go in there and collect all these things if you can. But they're not necessary, you know what I mean? Right. And, and you can always go back and collect them again. Yep, you can always revisit yeah. levels now. And that's also um, where the randomly generated uh, aspect comes in. So it's never really a drag to go revisit a level because they're sort of random, you know what I mean? So it, it keeps that element sort right. of fresh. Um, so you never really feel like, oh, God, I'm doing the same mission over and over again, and I can't do it, you know? So I think that's right. pretty cool. Now, uh, how the game works is you have a set amount of movement, um, and you can sort of... You have a couple options, right? So you can either move a short distance, and then you can uh, take aim and fire, right? You can use your weapon to attack the enemy. Or you mm-hmm. can forego that little bit of... Um, 
of that attack, and you can actually gain a little bit more distance. Um, and depending on the situation, uh, obviously is going to dictate what you're going to do. You know, if you find yourself in a pickle, you might want to say, you know what, it's not even worth attacking this enemy because I'm not going to kill him, and then him and two other people are going to attack me. So instead, I'm going to or just sprint. Yeah, I'm going to get out of dodge and go take cover and live to see another turn. You know, um, I think the characters are really fun. Uh, there are nine characters, and I believe the tenth is a DLC character. So I didn't actually have him, but if you were playing this on Switch, it includes the DLC. It it. So uh, you've got and, the and that character. Uh, I can't Ren. think of the name. Fez or something? Isn't it Ren or... or Ren? Or Fen? Something oh, it's like Fen. That. It's Fen. Fen. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's Combo funny. of the two. Uh, yeah. Uh, it works way different where uh, when when they kill other things, uh, then they get these... They charge up um, like this... Uh, this uh, bar, and then and then you can use that to heal yourself or upgrade your attack yeah. after after killing certain enemies and stuff. So and, it and he also has it's cool. He probably has the best character design as well. Yeah, but it I think that's the character from Dig Two, I I believe. Um, Maybe yeah, I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure on that either. But it. Yeah, well, the DLC came out before um, Dig 2. Dig yeah, 2. No. I mean, not to say that he couldn't still be in Dig 2. But but anyway, uh, yes. So now the objective is, like I said, you usually need to go do um, do your objective and then you got to get back in uh, to the area and leave that little space station and move on. And there's a bunch of levels. Um, they're not all mandatory in each world, but uh, the majority of them are. And as you continue to push on, like I said, you, you pick up some new characters. Um, you can pick up uh, new guns, which obviously as you, you know, do more damage as you continue on. Uh, as you level up, you unlock different skills, which sort of um, is, I think, is really fun because then each character has different abilities, right? So that sort of promotes changing up your party a little bit here and there depending on the situation. Generally speaking, I sort of got to my my core three people you know that i would generally use all the time but it's fun because oh, yeah. some of the abilities yeah. are um like uh like uh so the one character has i think it's called inspire but essentially it's if you're within a few spaces yeah. of that one person all of a sudden it gives a buff to your attack or it gives a, a rehealing of um life you know depending on the yeah. character and then there are abilities where you get a second shot or you get more movement. So it's fun to mix and match yeah, the, the different characters. The one I always the, I used like crazy was the cowboy like big bot or like the small and portly bot. Uh, he he could he could shoot after a sprint. So you could go attack, and then he had this gun that that was like ridiculously fr when you uh what does it call it when you hit someone from behind when you uh what the, there's a certain word for that execution you, <laughs> no it's it's that <laughs> well, I, I don't know why i can't think of it but it's when you hit him in the back of the head or like from behind uh he he does like twice as much damage and he can and he can shoot after a sprint so he was like so deadly because i could just go and run behind everyone and then shoot them, and then they, they all die. So it was amazing. But yeah, they all have their different things. And, and surprisingly, when I beat the game, I had leveled, I had max leveled like five, five or six of them. Dang. So you, so you were actively switching up your party quite a bit then. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, for five or six, yeah, of them. Because you kind of, you kind of had to. I mean, I, I, I felt like I, I needed to, at uh, the difficulty I was playing because some of them like are ridiculously hard and you have to use those um, those special features to get past the levels. Uh, yeah, you know, or or to three star. Them, you yep. Know, so well, one of my favorite characters was um, Billy Gill, which was uh, he was like the fish character. Do you remember him? <laughs> I don't think I used him. Oh, he, he's beautiful. I, I'm sending you a picture, by the way. Um, okay. Or maybe not. 
It's Billy Gill. Yeah, that's what I said, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what I liked about him is uh, after it, it, a move called Flea Fisher, uh, after you deliver a fatal attack, you get another move. Like you could just leave, run away. You know, you get an extra movement. So for me, really? yeah, so I really liked with him, I had a pretty strong gun on him. So he would sort of be my like, I'm going to run in there. I'm going to blast a fool and then I'm going to run away, you know, and uh, that's awesome. And he just looks amazing. And he, like, he, he's a fish, like his dialogue is all like, like, bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play with him on the new game. Yeah, plus. Oh, my God. <laughs> there you go. Quotes when guarding blub, blubbity blub. When moving, <laughs> blub blub blub. When lose, when losing hat, blurb. <laughs> Upon game completion, blub you all. <laughs> he, he's my favorite dude. But anyway, yeah, no, the the game is really great. Uh, to me, I like it way better better than Dig, just because I like the gameplay more. Um, it's really nice to I mean, get into the. It's mi- a masterpiece of strategy RPG. Yeah, it, it's easy to get into. Um, I feel like the rules are pretty fair, you know, they're up front. Completely fair. And yeah. what is really cool is, you know, with most strategy games or, you know, even JRPGs, it's a lot of like, okay, attack that person and then they sort of automatically do it, right? Um, what's cool about Heist is you get into position and then you get full 360 control of where you shoot. Now, this is obviously very important um, because... You could get into position, and you could have the guy dead to rights, and then if you just miss the shot, well, it's on you. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. It, 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 there's skill. Yeah, See, that's the thing, and, and it's exactly, exactly like, like what you just said. I mean, that's that's what really makes it fun and exciting and dynamic is that you have to actually use some skill to play this game. It's not just punching numbers like like a, an RPG, you know. Yeah, it, it essentially takes it from a, a good game to a great game, in my opinion. Because yes. if I think I would still enjoy Heist if it was just getting to position and they sort of took the, the shot, you know? But, mm-hmm. you know, adding that that control, like you said, it, it puts a level of skill and demand on the player. Um, you know, the characters, they are robots or steam bots, but um, they do breathe, quote-unquote, you know? So when you are aiming, they do sort of have like a little bob to them you know well, they gotta breathe a, a, yeah as if they're breathing the robot so that only adds to the level of difficulty of pulling off one of these shots now mm-hmm. what's cool is you can bounce off walls and stuff so if you do have a character that's sort of well well protected and a straight on attack you're not going to be able to hit them you can actually bounce it off the ceiling bounce it off the wall and do some crazy ricochets and actually hit them on their you know the the side that they're not covered on. So it gets really satisfying when you can start pulling off some of these, you know, crazy shots and, you know, all of a sudden it's like, Oh, that bounced off four walls. And then all of a sudden it hit him in the back of the head, you know, and it's a boom. Yeah. Took him out, you know, and it feels really good. So, um, if you are interested in any like tactical RPG games, I would highly recommend checking out a couple videos or something. I, I, it's fantastic. It's 20 bucks on the switch. And that includes the DLC. the DLC, um, oh man, I I liked it more than Mario and Rabbids, and I, I loved Mario and Rabbids. Love that game. I was just thinking about that game today. Um, uh, yeah, it's a an, a an amazing, uh, honestly, a masterpiece game. Uh, I I could see giving it a ten out of ten. It's that kind of a game. Um, uh, so yeah, um, funny thing that we were talking about strategy RPGs because there's also a uh, a uh, a set of strategy RPGs that just came out on the Switch um, that I've been playing. I've been playing the first one, and that is Mercenary Saga Chronicles. Now, I've heard a ton about this game, but I've never really done much research into exactly what it is. Yes, okay, so... Uh, if you remember, uh, Jules, watch him. Uh, on the first time he was on, he actually talked about one of these. I remember uh, that on the on the 3ds, uh, and I remember him saying he's like a surprisingly like for a four dollar game, a surprisingly good like strategy game, you know. Um, 
And I totally get that. And I think he played the second one. Uh, now, the, now this Mercenary Saga Chronicles has three games built into one, and I believe it's fourteen ninety nine. So it's like five bucks a game. Now, what I'm gonna say is, I think that uh, to quote Hank Hill, there are no shortcuts. And what I mean by that <laughs> is that um, you can definitely tell why these are worth five bucks each. Now. They are good. It, they are definitely worth five bucks a piece. Um, now the thing is, is your mileage will vary on your patience with these types of games. Now, I am not huge on uh, strategy RPGs. I mean, like I said, I, I love heists, and I lo- we t- we talked about this with David a few weeks ago. Um, now this game is very centered around the tactics games. Uh, the Final Fantasy Tactics games. Uh, I think it, it looks just like it. it. Has some great pixel art. Uh, looks great. Uh, it has these you know cute little like isometric setups, like maps and stuff. Um, now the thing is, uh, one of my problems that I had with the game, and I'm sure it's just because I, I never got used to it after playing after hours of play. But uh, you know, like everything is is going like, like. You know, isometric, so everything's like diagonal. Mm-hmm. So like up is like right up, and like right is right down, and down is down left. You know what I yeah. mean? Like yeah, it's not it exactly feels one weird. to one really at all. Now, <laughs> yeah. Now the only issue, the only I think the bigger part is, I I I think I realize I do not like the I, the isometric and practical gameplay. I do not like it, the viewpoint because it blocks things. Like it blocks areas that I want to see like where I can put my characters and where they can go if that makes sense like you know they're standing up and there's characters sitting to the left and you can't even see them or like in front of you like like you'll forget so it's kind of a weird thing I uh, now um yeah I think they were I mean this game must be very um inspired by your Final Fantasy tactics you know because yeah. that's yeah, Final Fantasy Tactics. I've never played uh, two or two Advance or whatever it is, but the original one for um, PS One was like that. And I tell you what, I really like how it looks. Now that yeah, it looks great. I would say it, like it might it be just the nostalgic feeling of Final Fantasy Tactics. Like oh, it sort right. of has that look. I th- that's why I like it, you know. But it's it's sort of cool, you know. But yeah, I could see how. You know, sort of mapping the button control, no, is sort of yeah. f- fishy. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I love the looks. Now, uh, can you rotate and, and, the and, screen? And, and, and I don't think so. See, I think you I, could do that in Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah, if I, I think remember that's correctly. My, yeah. And so, um, so here's the thing. So, screenshots look great of the game, but playing it, it runs at like a slow frame rate, mm. um, and it's kind of choppy. And then, um, like, there's <laughs> tons of typos. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> like, like it's weird. And, like, even on one of the main, on, on the actual main, uh, like, uh, oh, menu, like one of the, not the, like, HUDs, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it, it says, it says information. <laughs> like, instead of information. I don't know, so man. Like, no, dude, you, it's information. Have... What are you stupid? <laughs> information, and then like it'll have, it'll have tons of other like, you know, like extra spaces in between words, and then words spelled correctly, and then when you add on top, it even swears sometimes, mm. and I just think that swearing looks so funny when it's right next to like, information uh, typos. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just think it looks really the funny. The damn like, information was bad. <laughs> 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 exactly exactly so um it, it just kind of has that really unpolished feel to the game and on top of it if you're used to if you're used to uh fire emblem i mean this game is so slow to use because it's like you got to pick your character first of all you have to find your character with your, you know, just trying to find it with that isometric view is hard enough for me. <laughs> but, and then you have to hit A and then say, what do you want to do with this character? Do you want to move it? 
you want to use a, a, a huge menu of like 10 things you can do and then yeah I want to move it okay where do you want to move it to and then you pick the spot where it can move and then what do you want to do then do you want to use this thing do you want to attack do you want to fight okay now and then you also which which direction do you want to face because that's a big part of it is attacking people from the front or the side or behind will actually change so you want to position that in a good way, which I, I love that concept. I think that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, like if that's kind of positioning is important. Yeah. Yeah, but it just it's it adds up to like it takes a long time to get through a turn just because you're trying to to, to move uh, people like to the places, and then on top of that, you can't really see that well, and there's like a choppy frame rate, and it's not very satisfying to like hit people. Uh, it just doesn't have like that. It doesn't have the polish. I was just gonna say overall that, yeah. together polish. You know, and it's it, it's kind of a shame because I feel like what they have they have most of a really cool solid game uh, here. Uh, now I need to say I was like I'm saying I'm playing the first of the trilogy, so I am gonna dive into the other the other two and see if they made quality of life improvements and stuff yeah like the that. progression from they very one made, to two to three yeah. made yeah you gotta imagine yeah, they yeah. would have fixed and tweaked some things they might have even yeah. have added the r in information yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know i just that's so funny um but i mean like and then like when you die it just goes back to like main menu like it's weird it, it's just kind of like you die then it's like okay main menu start pick your file there's your you know mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just kind of weird, but uh, yeah, there is some depth to this game. I think if you're on a budget and you're looking for a lot of content, I think you could enjoy Mercenary Saga um, Chronicles. It's just, uh, uh, yeah, if you listen to what I just said, it's just kind of sloggy and unpolished. So, yeah, um, yeah. So check that out. That's on the eShop. Uh, like I said, I think it's fourteen ninety nine. Uh, released by Circle. Um, yeah. Now, what are we going to talk about next? <laughs> well, I, I'm going to talk about arms. Um, arms, I just wanted to talk a little bit about. We had our game night the other, uh, the other night on Friday. Woo! We had a, a nice yeah. turnout. We played a, a bunch of Splatoon 2, and we got into some good old ARMS, which for Finally. many of us was the first time in in months. So it was fun to get in there. Uh, there were, I think, three or four new characters that I had never played with. Um, so I took control. Oh, I forgot her name. Is it Dr. Coil or, or something to that? Yes. Doc- yes. Yeah, right? That was her name. Um, yes. really fun. She's got like a cool little floaty thing going on, but essentially it was just really fun to get back into that game and realize like, man, we should definitely play this more often. Um, well, maybe you should. Well, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> it means I suck at that oh, game. Oh <laughs> yeah. I, we all suck. I was getting pummeled Except for Don. Don. Yeah, I was going to say, except for Don. Don's good. Yeah, Don's... Very good. But yeah, um, like I said, I don't have much to talk about aside from well, that. Well, we could talk about the tournament mode that I didn't know existed. Oh, oh yeah. yeah I, I didn't even enable that, to be honest with you. I just used the standard arms. But I guess there is a way when you were playing with friends. Well, you right? had to have if you played with friends. Uh, well, I didn't change the arms, so I just used the, the standard. Oh, yeah. I mean, you didn't get into the... But you did... Yeah, so if you, like, do, if you hold down the right trigger... Uh, uh, not trigger the right analog stick and then hit L and R on the main screen you can switch the whole game to tournament mode and um, that unlocks every arm and then you can use that online and play with your friends like that which is insane and I think that a lot of uh, I've heard some guff from people who are fighting game fans that they don't like the upgrade system in arms because you have to upgrade by playing online to upgrade the arms and then like you know yeah, you got to put the like, time in, yeah. Yeah, so it's like people... But yeah, there actually is a tournament mode where everyone's the same. And uh, I think that's so cool. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, that was cool. That was fun to... I, I did try a few arms while I was playing, and Jill did too, so... 
Yeah, good stuff. Uh, like I said, not too much uh, aside from just wanted to report that it is still fun and that make sure to keep an eye out because we're definitely going to be doing those game nights more often because that was too much fun not to do. Um, yeah, big thanks to Lemonade and Eduardo. Um, and uh, who else do we have? We have Aaron and, and Nintendon joined us. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, and then uh, we also had... Um, uh, oh, we have Mr. Panda, of course. And, of course, to Daniel... Uh, who goes by Krausers, I believe, is how it's pronounced. Thanks for stopping by yeah. as well. He was a <laughs> yeah. He was the one that kind of said that we should do it. Yeah, I think. Yeah, so um, we're definitely going to uh, keep on doing those, but we'll do a little better job of um, getting it out there a little bit beforehand. This was sort of came yeah. together last second. Yeah, we'll do something on Twitter and maybe like pick the game, like see what games. But definitely Splatoon and Arms are so good. Do some Rocket League for sure next time. Yeah. No. Um. It's going to be good stuff. Now, my other game here, another 3DS game, and that is Radiant Historia. Radiant Historia. Perfect chronology. Which uh, I am playing the not. I'm not. I'm playing the imperfect chronology. Um, essentially, when you start up the game, they they give you the <laughs> option. <laughs> they give you the option okay. of uh, picking the perfect chronology or just like the standard one. The essentially the DS game. Um, the perfect chronology adds a third storyline into the already two storylines of this game. Now, that's cool. Yeah, I figured having never played the DS game, I was like, you know what, I better just stick to, to the original game and just sort of go from there. Now, this is mm-hmm. a game from Atlas. It's an RPG, JRPG. Um, it is got an interesting battle system, though. So, now how the game starts is um, like you start on one storyline and it comes to a point where it's like you need to make a decision and. It's either, uh, essentially, it's to join the army or sort of to stick to what you're already doing with, like, a, a special investigation team. And at first, I'm like, okay, like, I wonder what the right one is, you know what I mean? Um, but I'm like, I'm not going to look at a guide or anything. I'm just going to take this and go, go for it and see what happens. And you, you take the one, and all of a sudden, it's like, game over. like it's not necessarily like just that cut and dry but it it, like you do a little thing and then it's sort of like this is how it plays out you know and then it and it's like all right well let me try the other timeline so then you go there and you get a little further but you get to a point that all of a sudden you can't progress anymore right but then that's Mm -hmm. where you need to jump back to that first decision and now you can take the other path because the way the game works is Things that happen in one path of the game affect how things play out in the other path, right? So essentially, you're going to be bouncing back and forth between these two different storylines, and you're going to see characters um, interact with other characters a little differently, and things are going to happen that will alter the other timeline, and usually it's like, okay, now I can take a pause on this timeline, jump to the other one, and sort of progress and see how that plays out, and that'll most likely affect something in the other one so that I can jump back to that. Now... You just blew my mind. Yeah, in the beginning, I will admit, it was very confusing. Yeah. Like, I got to... Especially for a simple-minded person as yourself. (laughs) (laughs) I needed more information. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, so essentially when I first started, I... I needed to be informed. <laughs> In foam? <laughs> you pervert. Um, but essentially, yeah, so it, when I first started, it was very like, okay, I'm like, I'm stuck here. How do I figure this out? And I'm trying to figure it out. And I wasn't, you know, thinking like, okay, jump back to the other timeline because it hadn't clicked yet. And then all of a sudden, after a couple hours, I'm like, oh, okay, I see what's going on here. Um... What they do nice is they lay out the timelines really, really great. So you open up uh, the you know, the White Chronicle is what it's called. It's like this book you were given, and it shows you the timelines. 
and they're running parallel, and you can see, like, side quests that sort of branch out a little bit here and there, and how they connect uh, with one another. So it it's laid out really, really, really great um, as to not confuse you. You know, once you sort of wrap your head around the idea, it's like, okay, I could look at this, I can see what's going on. Uh, it gives you little summaries on each, they call them nodes. So it's like, oh, here's a node where I had to make a decision. And I could jump back to that node at any time. Um, I don't want to say any time. You need to... Like, there's um, save points, but they also act as you could jump back into the the past or jump forward in uh, the future with these these random spots on the map, right? So, mm-hmm. they, they lay it out really nice, and the story has become uh, progressively more interesting. I'm not going to uh, spoil anything, um, I guess I could lay down the groundwork is essentially like you are part of this one kingdom and you're at war with this other kingdom. And it's like, okay, th- that's how it starts off. But then all of a sudden you start to see, okay, these two kingdoms, like there's there's stuff going on in between them and with people who are deceiving, you know what I mean? So it's un- uh, unraveling itself to be very interesting and I'm, I'm really enjoying the story. Now, to get... Mm-hmm away from the story elements and more into the actual uh, battle system. It is interesting because you'll have three party members, but the idea is you want to combo things. So your enemies are on a nine by or a three by three grid, right? Um, so there are nine spots and the closer to you, they do more damage, right? And when they're further away, they don't do as much damage. Um, but, What the thing is, you can knock these enemies about. So you have like a push command or a push attack, and that'll push them to the back row. Um, And you'll also have push left and right. So you can start stacking these enemies. And then when they're stacked, they take, and then you hit them, they all take damage. And Oh, that's awesome. That's like uh, Paper Mario. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Like, you know how you can, like, stack the enemies and, like, hit them all? Yeah, yeah. The papers. Now, what's cool is, like you said, you get them, and then you can start uh, comboing up and doing big damage. But, essentially, on the bottom screen, they show you sort of, like, a, a timeline of the attacks. Sort of, like, your three partners, then the two enemies, then your three partners again. But you can actually change your order, Uh like, you can change with one of your teammates, you can change with an enemy, but when you change it, you become susceptible to critical attacks, so you're going to take more damage if you get hit. But, mm-hmm. it's good because then, all of a sudden, uh, I mean, there's been times where it'll be my three teammates, the one enemy, then my three teammates again. So it's like, well, I'm going to switch with that enemy so he can attack me right now, and then I'm going to be able to chain six attacks together and do, like, a stupid amount of damage. So is that super satisfying? Oh, yeah. And, it's, like you said, uh, when you get to, like, the bigger bosses and stuff, like, then all of a sudden you start... It's really satisfying to just see, like, huge chunks of these enemies going down, you know? And it's really fun. I, I like it a lot. Now, it does make, like, average battles that you would just normally find last a little bit long sometimes because often there are going to be like four or five enemies to deal with. And, you know, even if they're weak, it's like, well, I should still stack them to take them out quicker, you know what I mean? But yeah. stacking takes, you know, your your mana. So it's like, oh, I don't want to waste it all here because if I do get into a bigger battle, I want to have some mana to be able to, mm-hmm. you know. So that is a little mm-hmm. tricky. Um, but the good thing is, usually there aren't huge gaps between when you can sort of go take a rest at an inn, or, uh, when you find those books, uh, the save spots on the world, you can use mana crystals to restore there, but those are limited, so it's not something you want to do too often. But, I'm finding the battle system is fun, uh, like I said, the story is becoming very engaging, I'm really enjoying that, and, uh... So far, I'm really enjoying it. Now, I should note, there is no 3D. That's a bummer. Boo. But at, I yeah. feel like Atlas sort of has, uh, has sort of, with their ports at least, I feel like they don't bother mm-hmm. adding any stereoscopic 3D. So that that's a little bit of a bummer. But yeah. um, 
but otherwise i'm really enjoying uh the game so far now there are as i said how um the updated version adds that third timeline it also adds something uh the vault of time i believe it's called and it's sort of just like an area where you can go grind and get better gear um I believe there's like an end to it, and I'm sure when you work all your way down, there's probably some really great rewards, but I've used it. There was one area where I needed to grind a little bit just because I was getting killed, and I went in there, and it's nice and easy because the enemies are strong enough that they're giving you good experience, and then while you kill them, you also get like a currency that is unique to that area, and you could go to a vendor to purchase some items to make your team stronger. So it's just a really nice spot to be able to jump into... Yeah. And just sort of boost up your team a little bit, but yeah, I'm, I'm probably going. Well, I'm definitely going to finish this game by next recording, so I'll have uh, some final thoughts for you on it then. But so far, mm -hmm. I uh, I'd say it is living up to the hype. Beautiful. Yeah, I've heard really good things about it, and we have a good review on the site right now that Neil wrote. Yep. I believe, right? Yeah, Neil yeah. wrote the uh, review, and I plan on writing a review from, like, a first-time player's perspective when I'm done with it. Ah, there you go. Well, then you better you better do the, uh, you know, the perfect chronology. I sure will. You're going to play through yeah, it again? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't experience the whole <laughs> game. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I call shenanigans. I'm calling Colin. <laughs> Colin, Colin. <laughs> uh. Uh, anyway, now we have one more game to talk about. And this game that I have been waiting to talk about for so long and wanted to play for so long. And that game is From Long Hat House. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. From Long Hat. Yep. Is that what it yep. is? Long Hat Games, I believe, right? Or Long Hat Long Studio. Long hat. I think it's long hat. Long hat house. I got it right the first time. <laughs> well, that's not the name of the game. Oh, the name well, of the game oh, I is we're, our... Dondara. You know what I really like on longhathouses.com? Uh, Underneath their name, games you would maybe want to make your granny play someday. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. But yes, tell us about Dundara, because this is a game that's been on both our radars since last PAX, so almost a year now. Yeah, we interviewed these guys at PAX last year. Um, you know, they had just uh, kind of came out... With uh, they had that an indie spotlight showcase thing where they were kind of highlighted on there, um, and we got to talk with them, and they were the nicest guys you've ever met. Um, and uh, yeah, they finally have Dandara out. Uh, it's a Metroidvania game that you don't walk or run or jump in. Um, instead, I mean, I guess you are only jumping from wall to wall. Um, so not like uh, your standard Samus. Now, that is definitely the crazy hook of the game. Now, I mean, it's completely is a very fresh, unique take on this genre, right? Now, imagine if Samus was stuck stuck to walls and the floor, and you know she could only shoot to different at, at angles to different things to move. Uh, so as you can see, that makes a lot of situations way quicker and way faster and then it makes a lot of situations way harder uh, like dodging bullets from on oncoming enemies at you know you have to think differently you have to change how you're gonna play you know <clears throat> um, yeah and uh, it's it's amazing because it like um, the bosses can be I mean this game it's tough is isn't freaking it? hard yeah, it's a very, very hard. Um, now, not impossible, but it's like, this is, like, you're going to die a lot, <laughs> you know? And you are collecting, your currency is salt, basically, um, that from you get from enemies. Uh, you can find them in, in chests, they're treasure chests. 
um, and then you can get upgrades. Uh, upgrades like an extra heart. Uh, upgrades to you will find um, you'll get a power that basically is just like a potion from Zelda where um, you know it restores one heart or it restores two. You can upgrade how good that I think they call it an essence. How they they uh, you can upgrade your essence so that like like it's like okay you can upgrade your normal hearts from four to five hearts or you can upgrade your essence to heal three hearts instead of two hearts. So really that and then you have more then you'll find other essences like in treasure chests meaning that every time like you're at a save point you'll get all your essences back so you'll have like six of them like I have like six essences right now that means I can heal with the essence like it's like I have six potions oh, okay um so that's good yeah. so <laughs> those potions so it's like really upgrading those is like giving you five hearts or six hearts to depending on how many of those you have, you know, rather than just upgrading your normal health, if that makes sense. So it's like, but then you might want to upgrade your normal health because it takes a little time to use those potions. Oh, so they're not instant. Um, like, I mean, they're like instant after like uh, two seconds. You know what I mean? Like, like you hit it and then she, but like if you're in trouble, like you will get hit, you know what I mean? So you have to be in a safe spot to use them. So, um... <laughs> it's it's so hard but it's good hard uh it is so much so what i did the other night was uh i i got on my 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 projector downstairs and this was at night and i blasted the speakers i was home alone well me and me and the pooch we were home alone <laughs> me and the pooch and i played i played dandara for like a good 2 hours just straight and it was so much fun. The aesthetic, the environment, amazing. Complete. And now this game is great handheld as well. That's what I was mostly mostly playing it as. Uh, but and then but it also plays great on a hundred and thirty inch screen. Uh, you love that and, projector, uh, man. <laughs> oh, dude, I do. It's so good, man. Highly recommended to get a a big projector. Um. Yeah, so, I mean, do you have, I mean, I know you haven't got a chance to play it yet. Um, I mean, what are your questions? What are, I mean, like, do you, you know, what are you wondering about the game? Well, I know um, when we played the demo at PAX, I mean, it might have just been because, you know, obviously PAX is sort of a crazy environment to be trying these games, especially mm -hmm. one where it's, like, uh, unconventional in your movement, like you said, how you sort of bounce right. off the walls and stuff. How long did it take you to sort of uh familiarize yourself where you could Very where you good. felt like you were really in control yes yeah, so i was talking to neil because he did the review for this game as well um where uh and i i think he, he it was a little harder for him uh but for me i i got to it so quickly like within a couple minutes i uh, because basically you can zip around the place at very high speeds if you if you've seen any uh, uh, little videos on YouTube or anything. Um, you can go very fast, and the reason is is because as you know, I point the analog stick like you know up left to go to go up left. Dandara jumps over there as she's jumping. I'll switch it to go. I can pick where I'm gonna go next, and bim 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 bim. You can zigzag right up the walls, and it's it's kind of like a it has a very good, um, uh, it, it locks on to walls, like, easy, so you don't have to be, like, exact, exact when you're aiming, uh, there's, like, a big beacon to where, saying where you're gonna shoot, and then, uh, or jump to, and you'll, you'll jump really fast, so, for me, honestly, it was very, very quick where I got used to it, the only, like for as as for like traversing now in combat is where it gets a little tricky where you actually have to start thinking differently whereas okay i no i cannot just move left i cannot just dodge attack i literally have to jump mm -hmm. I, I can't move you know like you have to jump to another surface to dodge something this isn't like a ducking i mean you can duck a little bit but not a lot you know if you hold down can you goose uh, you can goose definitely <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh 
Yeah, so, yeah, honestly, I got to it really fast now. Reading other reviewers, I think that it's one of those things, this is going to be a hit or miss type thing with people. Um, I would just say to trust in the controls more than you think for when you're traversing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that because it really locks on good. Um, the other thing is, like, there's no saving. Like, you know, you can't just save at any time. You have to get to a campfire. Um, if you die, you lose all your salt. Ooh, um, man, that's all brutal. Of it. Brutal. But, 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 if, when you, when you die, you'll leave a ghost. Oh, so you can go back and sort you of get pick back it up. to your ghost. You can get your salt. Now, if you yes. die again, do you lose it? Does it create like a new ghost and the other one's gone? You know, I am. I'm so good. I never I, even I'm, experienced that. Well, <laughs> that's not what I said. <laughs> that's what you were I, thinking. It's funny because there are other ghosts around, like from other people. And it's funny because like when you get a ghost, you'll see how they died. And it's kind of like an artsy way of telling them how they died. Um, anyway, and so sometimes like I, that happened to me like today as I was playing where I died. And I died on my way back to getting my ghost. And I went back, but then I found another ghost there, but I couldn't, I didn't. I couldn't tell if it was mine or if it was just a random one that was out there. So I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that if you die, like, before you get to your ghost, you'll lose your salt. I'm pretty sure. But it could be. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know that exactly. That's right. So, my, my last question um, on, for me at least, on Dundara. Yeah. Now, obviously, Metroidvania is very reliant on sort of re-traversing areas you had already met. Um, and, and obviously big exploration and sort of finding those power-ups, is it as heavily um, reliant on those kind of core mechanics, or you know, is it more like you're going to push forward and there might be some light backtracking, or do they really sort of lean into that backtracking element? I, th- I think they lean into the backtracking, but you don't notice it as much because of how quick you can move throughout the map um i uh, i don't think it's as backtracky as a metroid game um i think the maps are a little simpler the only thing that isn't as simple is that it doesn't show you where you are on the map like when you look at the map in the room it doesn't show like a little you know light of where you are and this is a really big problem uh, if you're relying on that, which, I mean, it's not a big deal because it's like you can kind of figure it out, but it's like it's kind of like a thing that would have been way better. And this, I've heard this from everyone, is that you can't tell you where, when you are, and that's annoying because when you move into a room, like, it will change. Like, uh, it might change, like, your uh, your your camera view will, will you know, will, will rotate, like, 90 degrees. So when you're looking at a room, you won't know... I mean, because the map doesn't change on the screen, but your your viewpoint will change in the world. So you don't know if you're on the ceiling or on the floor. You know, Yeah, so it's tough to know if you've actually been in that so room. So you kind of have to look at the shape of the room and then try to figure out where you are. And it's like, you know, if they would just put where I am in the room, this wouldn't be a problem at all. And I know exactly where I was. So it's kind of like a, a no-duh type thing. But it's one of those things where, yeah, it's kind of unfortunate, but it's not... A game breaker by any means uh but that that can get in the way of the backtracking uh you know in a sense it's kind of harder to figure out um where you are but i you know like i i haven't i haven't experienced any 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 problems with the backtracking where i thought this was annoying i mean at the beginning i was kind of confused of where to go so i was backtracking a lot like trying to figure out exactly what to do kind of like what you do in metroid games like you know there's like one little hint somewhere you know and it just turns out that i just was being stupid you know yeah Um, it was right in front of me uh, the whole time yeah that happens to me all the time yeah yeah so um i mean not in don darrow i just mean in metroid games so um but yeah uh i haven't beat it yet but i have played a lot of it um, I seem to be liking it more than, you know, I'm, I'm more on the on the top. Like I like it more than other people. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, Neil gave it a really good review. Uh, Neil's review is fantastic on 
uh, Nintendo World Report. So check that out. And yeah, he's actually doing a video review, which I think is out. I think is out, or it's going to be by the time this is published. Um, so check that out. Um, and uh, everything goes good. We should be having uh, the Dandar guys on next week for the show. Uh, Ooh-wee. So yeah, that's going to be fun. So um, they're the best guys. They're Brazilian. Now they said they're only going to speak. Uh, is it Portuguese? Is that what they speak? What do you mean? They talk. Yeah, so they we're speak gonna have to, Brazilian. We're gonna have to get our. We're gonna have to get our, our Portuguese correspondent, David Lloyd, in. So uh, to do that, <laughs> he he wears many hats. Yep, he's a he's a man of uh, great skills. He's also the yep, hardest like, working man in Canada. In Canada, and he's like one of those steam bots. From heist, he wears many hats. Amen. But anyway, we will definitely be, no matter what, next week we'll be talking about Dandara in some form. So look forward to that. Uh, it's out right now, uh, which we will f- talk about because we are about to take a little break right now and come back and discuss the eShop roundup. Give me that eShop, baby. We are back in Perry. It is that time, baby. What is it? It is? Maybe. I hope so. Time for what? The eShop round. Yeehaw. Ooh-wee. All right. Well, we got a packed, hearty, if I may say so, week. Can I say that? Yeah, that, that looks pretty hearty to me. Definitely. Uh, let's start off. Let's get through this ASAP. Because... Lightning round. Lightning round. Pew, 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 pew. Boom. First, we have Eternal Blade, which is one word for fourteen ninety nine. Uh, this is uh, it's a puzzles uh, fighting type game, I believe. Uh, kind of looks like a at some point like a platformer. Yeah, it says action platformer. Uh, use time ability to oh, solve man. puzzles. Survive in battle. Now, there's a demo for this, and there's also DLC. Like the bikini costume for nine ninety nine cents. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> yep. Now, <laughs> what do we have next, Casey? Next up, we have Frederick Two Evil Strikes Back for four ninety nine. Now this <laughs> yeah. is like a, a weird See, arcade music game. Yeah, I mean, we've seen. I remember talking about the first one not too long ago, where uh, it, it's like a. You're playing a guitar and it, like you're playing piano and on the screen. So this is some sort of rhythm game. Uh, Frederick, Evil Strikes Back, the bigger, better, more awesome sequel. Uh, Boom! So you defeat famous opponents in musical duels. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's only four ninety nine again. So that's Frederick Two Evil Strikes Back. Jimmy alert! Jimmy alert! Wee woo wee woo! <laughs> what our, our next our next one? Next game here, yep. Shiflings Enhanced Edition for the Jimmy Price of eleven dollars and twenty-five cents. What were you guys thinking? Anyway, this is a platformer puzzle game. Uh, I guess it oh. also has an emphasis on some multiplayer, uh, two players simultaneous play. Um, yeah, it looks like a, a, a. You might even call this a puzzle form. I would definitely call it a puzzle form. It's very bright, vibrant. Kind of reminds me of like. Uh, uh, in a, like an illumination movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yeah, it uh, lo- looks uh, which we looks might all be talking right. about in the next segment. Maybe. It, it, maybe I don't know. Anyway, this uh, <laughs> the next one is an amazing name. Uh, <laughs> the Men of Yoshiwara. Kikuya. Is that a Yoshi game? Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just the love story between Yoshi and Birdo. <laughs> uh. Now, uh, you want to hear features, the story? This features anime and men that are stroking women's face and saying, "This is the quickest way for a man and a woman to get to know each other better." Well, it says, "What is the men of Yoshiwara K- 
Kaikuyu. I can't, whatever. This is a popular romance game for women. The story, a closed island where baby boys are not born. A unique culture that is completely different from the mainland. Uh, man, the mainland has been flourishing on the island. In the middle of the island, there is a district where men are gathered. Some women just want children. Others are looking for love. Knowingly... De De deceived by a lie and deceived in return all at night. This podcast. Yeah, I feel dirty just reading the description. <laughs> of 1999. That's a game, all right. All right. Sounds like sounds like a very Japanese game. Now, speaking of a very Japanese game, we have Her Majesty's Spiffing. At first, I thought it said sniffing. I was like, oh god. No. No, this is a. Uh, some sort of Star Wars, uh, uh, owed clone. Star Wars clone, yeah. The Empire Staggers Back. <laughs> this sounds like a game for David Lloyd. It sure does. Yep. God at save a, the Queen. A, yeah, at a fair price of nine ninety nine. I think it's a it's an adventure. Yeah, it's an adventure game. So it's fun. I think I've heard good things about this game. So yeah, it looks funny. Check it out. Next up here, we've got Island Flight Simulator for 1999. Now, I believe this also came out for the Wii U. I don't know if there's any hmm. uh, enhancements or not. Um, yeah. I'm trying to look at side-to-side -side screens. Arcade Flight Simulation. Open-ended gameplay. Touchdown in the tropics. Transport freight between 12 exotic islands. Now, looking at the screenshots, they're not very nice looking. Uh, they kind of look like asset packages from like unreal or something mm -hmm. um anyway it kind of looks like pilot wings but it's 1999 kind of a big price i like the logo nice logo sure not, not too bad now casey i want to ask you a question okay i'm all ears okay and don't look at the at the document don't look at your switch or anything D true or false neo geo samurai showdown 3 has been announced for, uh, is out on the Switch. Incorrect. You you don't think so? Nope. What about Showdown 2? Ding, 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 ding. It's a week, baby. It's a week. Yes, sir. Yep. Showdown Sam 2. <laughs> yeah, it's Samurai Showdown 2. Wow. I, uh, I can't believe this wasn't released already. I could have sworn it was. But, it might yeah, have been. It's, it's I a swear... Really you know, this game is very colorful, um, actually, compared to um, other of the fighting Neo Geo games. It just looks really, like, lots of reds. It's really cool looking. Flamingos in the background. Lots of flamingos. Yep. And, uh, yeah, amber waves of grain. So, uh, yeah, check that out, Neo Geo. We have to have our hamster toss. We just have to. Now, Casey has been known to download certain types of games while on the podcast while doing eShop roundups. Now, did that happen today with this next one? Not for that price. What do we got? Next up here, we've got 3D Mini Golf uh, for $19.99. I tell you what, though, looking at the screens, looks like a, a nice little uh, mini golf game, but yeah, a pretty high price tag, I think, for a golf game, a mini golf game. But yeah. uh, they said over 54 challenging holes, 18 <laughs> of which uh, faithfully modeled after official courses in the real world. Okay. Well, the glorious HD. Um, uh, like I said, it does look good. Like you know, you know what I mean. Uh, four, graphically, four, up to four players. Uh, so yeah, two exciting single player modes. It does look good, but I don't know for tw twenty bucks. So. Now, this next game came out of nowhere. I believe it was one of those, like, announced uh, the day before it came out. And that is Crypt of the Necrodancer. Um, actually, it might not have been announced the day before, but, I th like, w was this yeah. announced beforehand? Uh, yeah, but I don't think the I know date it was. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I think it was one of those, like, it had been mentioned before, and then all of a sudden you didn't never heard about it until, like, oh, it right. comes out tomorrow. Do you know about this game? I don't know much. Um, it's a role-playing game, but I believe it also is it's like a, a hardcore rhythm-based dungeon game crawling too. game. It's rhythm-based. I've heard a lot of really good things, and people were really, really happy uh, 
when you know it was announced that it was coming out so and i think that it the music is done i don't i'm not 100 sure but I, I think i heard that music is done by the same guy who did the super meat boy the original soundtrack for that is and that people, danny people really Barrow- like baranowski probably yeah yeah that's because that on the yeah the page it yeah. says that that's, yeah, yeah super meat boy yep Beast, yeah Boom. so this game looks very interesting cool pixel art uh crypt of the neck Crypt of the Necro Dancer Nintendo Switch Edition. It's Casey's favorite when they have Nintendo Switch in the name. Yeah, that one not as as, as bad as the other ones, but right. that might be a game I check out uh, on sale. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, I'm definitely interested. So next up now, here we've got Sky Force Reloaded for nine ninety nine. Now mm-hmm. this game, I'm looking at the screenshots. Uh, looks like a shoot 'em up. Yep. And it looks sort of like a Nano Stray. Remember that game for the DS? Definitely. So it, it that's the vibes it's sort of giving me right here. Uh, looks looks nice. Looks like a, a fun little shoot 'em up. Uh, yeah. Reloaded. I'm assuming it is some sort of uh, port or an enhanced port, maybe. Maybe. But, uh, yeah. yeah. If you're looking for a shoot 'em up, boom Flash, boom. If you're lo- looking for flashy explosions, there you go. That's your man. Next up, we have SteamWorld Dig, the original. From Image and Form, nine ninety nine. Talked about it before. Uh, it's definitely a fantastic game and beautiful on Switch. Next up here, we've got Night in the Woods for nineteen ninety nine. Now, this is an adventure game. I believe it also has some uh, platforming elements in there as well. And I really, really, really like the art style. Yeah, I've heard um, nothing but really good things about this game, and it tackles a lot of like actual like. People are just like really surprised by the themes in it and like the event, you know, the characters and stuff. And uh, heard lots about it. And it's anthropomorphic animals. So uh, yeah, the, the problem art is, is it's great. an adventure game, man. Those just I just generally don't. I know, but dude, I've heard up. really good things. Like people who don't really like adventure games. So anyway, but yeah, I'm just saying. I no, no, I know like, what you mean. Yeah. It, it, I wish I could enjoy a game like that. W- one of these days, I'll probably give it another another crack, you know, but that day yeah. is not today. Yep. Yep. It's not, It's no stick it to the man. Um, next up, we have... How do you actually, know? Have you ever yeah, played it? Uh, I do. I haven't. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just love stick it to the man that much. Um, next up, we have Sad Carnage. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was no. that a... <laughs> Mad Carnage. No, that was my joke that I made. Uh, this is actually a strategy game. Uh, I thought game there was a typo in that, it. No, no, I was talking with Justin Nation, and I made that joke with him because uh, he just said it's it's not that good. Now, gotcha. this is a strategy game for five bucks, and it's funny because we've actually talked about strategy games for five bucks already on the show. Um, but it's very interesting because you play as a car, um, <laughs> and there's some you weird are the comics. Car. Kind of like Mad Max type thing going on. That yeah, it looks like and Carnage. like uh, follow John Carnage. Yep, yep. So, yep, yep. yep. A best-selling sci-fi novelist. Anyway, next up here we've got Premium Pool Arena. Now, if you like pool games, this might be up your alley. Here, you got uh, traditional eight ball. You can take part in some tournaments. You can win the daily challenges. And uh, customize your games with different available table styles. Um, looks yeah, like I mean, this uh, is just like a straight top-down pool game. Yep. Now it would be cool if you could lay that the switch down flat, right? And you project the screen, uh, s- sort of like what I imagine you can do, or looks like you would be able of to do. You can. But yeah. maybe you have. Imagine having the Joy Cons like with the motion and the oh, the IR awesome. to like actually sort of push like you were, you know, holding a pool stick. Dude, dude, Labo, pool table. I could Boom. so see that. I could so see that. And, and I, I don't know if I said it, that is eleven ninety nine. There you go. Beautiful. Uh, next up, we have Black Hole from Doof Games. And uh, this is an, I, I love, if you look at the, the, uh, the, the slogan or the subtitle for this, it just says an action-packed space shooter. Period. Like just straight, straight cut to the bone, baby. An action-packed space. It's not excited to tell you, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's a space. It's shooter. just facts. They don't need to get excited about facts. Yep. 
Yep, this game, uh, yeah, it's, it doesn't look that pretty to, to, to me, but, uh, it's a twin stick shooter in space, which I know that sounds crazy, but, yeah, whatever. Say what? Now, we have two more games left, um, and, yeah, I believe I guess, just Juan. Well, I forgot to put the last one on there, but, uh, <laughs> well, then we let have... me take this one since yep. you. <laughs> Mercenary Kings Reloaded for 19.99. This is a uh, platforming shooter, t uh, 2D shooter, and uh, I've heard many things about this. I don't really know too much, but yeah. I have a feeling one of us is going to be talking about this game next week. Yep, yep, we will definitely be talking about this game next week. So uh, look forward to that. Now. Uh... Yeah, fun little pixely, which is also coming to uh, physical. Boom. Uh, by uh, I think this is one of the limited run games. I think. I believe so. Yeah. Now, last up, we have Dandara, of course. Um, oh which yeah. I, Burp. Which I believe is eleven ninety nine, or is it fourteen ninety nine? I, I think believe it might it's be a fourteen. Discount. Yeah, I believe it was fourteen ninety nine, and if you pre ordered it. You could get it for eleven ninety nine. Gotcha. So yeah, I'm checking right now. It is up at its fourteen ninety nine price point. Absolutely well worth it and a must buy. So for a Metroid fans, this is game is so much like Super Metroid, like the look. I don't know if we really talked about that, but it's the look of it. It's just kind of like a different aesthetic, but in the Super Metroid art kind of. It's hard to explain. Anyway, that'll do it for the eShop Roundup, and it is time to move on to the old news block. News Talk with Casey Gibson. Yes, sir. It is that time again. And just like the hardy eShop Roundup, I would... It's not as bona fide hardy as the eShop Roundup was, but it is hardy. We got some topics this is here. like, you know, like kidney e. A kidney bean? A kidney E. Or s spleeny. Or information. <laughs> Give me anyway. the information. <laughs> First up here, this actually, I believe. Jimmy was right. I believe this news came out on like Wednesday or Thursday. It was right after we recorded, I feel like. Um, but yes, Nintendo Online is to launch. And what? When did I say it was going to launch a couple episodes you, ago? You said September. Ba -ba -ba Boom, baby. And you said That's with right. Animal Crossing. Yeah, they they didn't announce that part yet. I I figure uh, that'll be E three, of course. The, my my friends at Nintendo tell me in uh, at E three. I don't have any friends at Nintendo. Uncle but, Amiibo, Uncle yeah. Gippy told you. Uh, <laughs> the Gripster. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, the, no other details uh, aside from that September twenty eighteen. Um, I wonder if we'll learn more at E3 or maybe around E3. Um, I have a feeling it's not going to be super exciting news, <laughs> aside from like, hey, we're going to charge you 20 bucks to play these games. Um, but yeah, Casey told you so. You did it. I, I'm proud of you. Hey, I, I predicted Bayonetta. I predicted Hyrule Warriors. Uh, what are you trying to take the spotlight no, from me, huh? I'm not trying to take a spotlight. I'm just you saying. We, are you a one upper, bro? I, I say we done. We He's both a one done upper. Good. He's I a say one we upper. Both done, no, I'm a teamster. <laughs> All right. Next up, this is some good news. Uh, oh, Rocket this is League amazing. performance and visual quality updates are coming yes. to the Switch in April, so not and, that far off. And better off, video capture is coming. Yes. Oh my goodness, I'm going to be using that. All the time. Seriously, they, I've I'm wanted to use that so much. I'm surprised that wasn't ready for launch, but I'm, I'm really happy that they're prioritizing they're... it. They realize that's something important to have, you know? Absolutely, yes. Yes. So uh, that's that's really I'm really looking forward. So we will definitely be talking more about Rocket League. So there you go. Um, next up, though. Uh, good news, Bayonetta 2 runs better in portable mode than on Wii U. Woo-wee! It has super improved load times, which we showed on our NWR TV channel. Uh, I believe that John Raritan put together, I think. It was, it was either John or Jared. Uh, one of those two men are the, uh, the pioneers yep. over there on the YouTube there. Gotcha, um, yeah. Yeah, no, like... 
Very really, cool. really, really improved. So that that is exciting to hear about. That is, isn't it weird? Like, isn't that weird that the Switch is more powerful than the Wii U, and it's like, you know what a I mean? Portable, and it's a portable. It just it doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. I think yeah, I think Nintendo got too far into their own like, oh, we're the Wii, we can make our own sort of like, you know, whatever. Yeah. We're we're the we're the kings, you know. And then all of a sudden it was like, eh, this is sort of hard to develop for, and right. Nobody wants it. But anyway. But we have more good news. I was going to say, but you know what everybody wants? And that is Celeste on the Switch because that is exactly where it sold best. And uh, I think this is becoming a trend. Obviously, uh, it seems most Nindies are really, really doing well on the Switch. Um, I was actually listening to Kind of Funny Games Daily the other day. And they had it to the point, I, I think they mentioned that Celeste sold best on the Switch. And, like, viewers were chiming in that... They didn't even realize it was available on other consoles, you know? So I think that is sort of a testament to Nintendo's sort of branding. Um, to You know, Celeste was one that they showcased, and I think a lot of people were like, oh, that's a, that's a Switch game, Nintendo game, you know? And then they don't even realize you can get that on the other consoles. Um, just so crazy to think how bad Nintendo was at advertising with the Wii U and how... They've done like a complete 180 and just knocking it out of the ballpark. Yep. That was some nice information, Casey, but please don't ever mention competing podcasts on this podcast ever again. I'll do what I want. All right. they're, well, they're nowhere near as good as us, so I mean, it's <laughs> like uh, you don't really even need to worry about it. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Now, there was a, uh, a nine-month financial briefing for the Switch that Nintendo... Did. Now, there's a lot of amazing, amazing things to come out of it. Uh, one of them being Nintendo Switch has sold 14.86 million consoles since launch. So in 10 months, it has outsold the uh, yeah, the, the old Wii U. Now, crazy to think that um, uh, it's going to be moving up to to take the, the, the GameCube. Yeah, before we know it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is insane. Like, I, it's weird to th- like. It is mind blowing that think about the lifespan, the five year lifespan of the Wii U. It has sold more than that already in ten months. That really is. And, and so the next milestone would be twenty two million for the GameCube. So I mean, they've already sold fifteen. I mean, like that's only seven away from the GameCube. Yeah, I mean, there's going to definitely be a point where. I mean, they cannot continue to sell Switches at the rate they're doing it now. Uh, I don't know. But, I don't know. I would not say that because... Well, with, I mean, Labo, it's going to tail off eventually. I well, mean, how come obviously. PS2 sold so much? I mean, you know what I well, mean? Well, that was because that PS2 was a DVD player. PS2 sold 150 player. million. Yeah, but that was because it was a cheap DVD player when people wanted DVD players. I know, but I'm just saying oh, this no, no, is I, selling better than it. Well, no, no, no that's a PS4. Well, I mean, it's that, it's the Switch has sold more. It's the fastest selling console of all time. Well, yeah, but I, so I it, just that's what I mean. Yeah, I think. Don't I mean, bring me down. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, realistically, for the Switch, I foresee it being Nintendo's second best selling console. If you're ex- I'm not counting 3DSs and all that stuff, I could see it. Nope. I don't think it'll ever get to Wii or even close to Wii. Wii was ridiculous, you know. But I can see but it's like already outpacing the Wii. Yeah, but well, the Wii was also shortages. If they had enough Wiis, they would have yeah, sold. Yeah, but like they've a captured the hardcore audience. I, hey, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't foresee the Switch hitting Wii sales or even in that ballpark. But really? like I said, I hope I'm wrong. I mean, I could see the Switch selling like sixty to eighty million. That would be insane. But it's still not. A hundred plus, you know. By the end of its lifespan, I don't think so. I think it's definitely going to overtake it. All right, a hundred dollar bet. You ready to put it right down now? Really? Are you? I serious? bet you a hundred dollars that the Switch does not outsell the Wii by the Are time the next console comes out. Yes. Now hold on, hold on, because I'm totally down for this, but like we have to say like a Benjamin you know, Franklin. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had to say 
like what is the i mean because the, they they just said that they want to make this be a way longer lifespan with the switch by by the time the switch's successor is launched it will not have sold more than the wii a hundred dollars okay a okay. hundred bucks put it in the books boys put it in the books now hear hear me out perry if you want to paypal me that hundred now i'm okay with it no you're not Anyway, moving along here, um, a little last little tidbit on the sales figures. Switch is currently outselling the PS4 at the 10-month mark uh, by 3 million units, so it's uh, doing very well. Mm-hmm. Now, yep. you're, you're going to owe me 100 bucks. But anyway. No, <laughs> nope. Now, do you, this next game here, Pillars of Eternity 2 Dead Fire is coming to the Switch. Now, I did not know really anything about this game. But it is from the same developers as Fallout New Vegas and South Park Stick of Truth. Um, and it looks really cool. It's a, an RPG, um, sort of like a gritty-looking RPG. Um, I, like I said, I, I didn't get to really look too much. They had like a crazy six-minute trailer on uh, on their site, but it also looked like they had some developers talking about it. But this game looks really cool, and it's going to be coming out, I believe... Uh, holiday season around then but really cool you know i guess i kind of sabotage myself because every single time i bet i always lose but that's okay <laughs> i might have just sabotaged the switch yeah uh, they never anyway. sold another switch again but yeah i've heard really good things about this already for the pillars of eternity i mean just as it's been announced i haven't heard of it outside of before it was announced for switch so, I believe um, it's going to be like day and date with like the PS4 cuz I believe uh, Oh, okay. I believe it was uh originally just being um developed for PC and all that stuff, but now I believe they are coming out to all of the consoles. So, it's uh looks cool and like I said, hey, more games that are coming out day and date with other versions, you know what I mean? mm mm-hmm. Mhm. It's just bodes well for the Switch. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and hopefully it sells the most, which it should. It should. If a game is on Switch and on other consoles, it it should sell most on Switch because it's a better console. Anyway. <laughs> no, that is a fact. He's, that he's is throwing a practical shade at the fact. other consoles. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it's a better console. You cannot take your Xbox with you. You can, but you, you sure can. can. You could run in 4K, though. That's true. That's true. But that, that does not beat out the practical use of, of portability. It doesn't. I saw, I saw a picture. Um, it was someone had, like, a 50-inch TV on, like, a train, and, like, their PS4 was hooked up to it, and they were playing a game. <laughs> <laughs> and so okay. I think someone was like, take corrected. that switch. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is back to the best. Any way. any system's portable if you want it to be. That's true. That's true. Now, we have some physical releases, uh, some announcements. Um, <laughs> uh, the first one being Brawl Out, that Smash clone, uh, coming out in early May. And uh, along with that is an update coming, like, very soon. It might already be out by the time this is published, uh, that fixed a lot of the online stuff. Uh, and the uh, glitches and stuff. So that's pretty cool. And this game looked pretty awesome. Uh, I was interested. I just kind of I heard middling reviews on it because yeah, of the I, online. I was going to say, I wonder if these patches address those issues. If uh... Oh, I'm sure they do. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. So that's really, that's really good news. Now, the other physical release is just what I thought. SteamWorld Dig 2. Ooh-wee! You called the perfect, it. Yep, the perfect uh, thing for Casey to wait for. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I was, uh, I've been really close a few times, but then just like the timing with other games didn't line up, and then I was right. like, and then I got to the point where I'm waiting for a sale, and then boom, I'm glad I waited because I'm gonna pick this puppy up on physical, and then I'm just gonna send pictures to Perry every day to remind mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. Oh, yep, you see that cover, idea. dude? You see that it's box so art? Good. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. All right. The rumor mill. It, is, it has been fired up. The mill, she's a turning. Yep. 
Now, the first rumor comes out that Crash Bandicoot might be coming to the Switch later this year. Um, I guess in some like leaked documents or a picture or something, uh, Activision will release the Insane Trilogy on Switch and PC in 2018. Apparently, there's a new Crash game coming in 2019, and Activision has plans for Crash titles through 2022. <laughs> All right. I'll take it. I think it's it makes sense. Like Yeah, I mean I think that, it, it's I think, Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say it's not really obviously when you think Crash Bandicoot, you're thinking Sony and you're thinking PS one and two. Um but you know what? Crash Bandicoot seems like a kind of game that would work well on Switch because it's a people, 3D platformer it, thing. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's I, Crash was made to sort of combat nintendo you know back in the day so yeah. it would uh be fitting to to have it come uh, full circle here and come out in the switch later this year yeah i'm I, sure that would make I, a lot of people happy absolutely yep um and there might be some other activision craziness and what's because, that Perry? Uh, well the rumors are saying that black ops 4 is going to be this year's black op or uh, black ops this year's <laughs> call of duty and uh that it's coming to switch that would be and huge yeah, if that is correct, that I feel like that would be big and really awesome. Now, I feel like the, it, the Call of Duty craze is finally tapering a little, for the most part. I mean, I, don't, I right? I think uh, it's not growing in sales anymore. Yeah, I, I think it's still doing just it's fine, but yeah, a it's not. I mean, it's I feel still like, an absolute. Yeah, I feel like every year it used to be that okay, it's Call of Duty Day, you know, and it's like people will go crazy. Yeah, I feel like that, yeah. that hype sort of died down with um, with yeah. games like Fortnite and um, I'm trying to think, I'm blank, like Destiny 2, although um, I Overwatch. believe that uh, that's got some negative uh, feelings swirling around it. But, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I guess it's just... I definitely love Call of Duty games, and this sounds awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, you can only, I guess, play so many Call of Duty games, but... I haven't played one in a number of years now, and I would totally be into uh, jump back into that because yeah. I mean, I I know they get a lot of hate because it's you know annualized and all that, but at the the end of the day, they they're really well made and they're you know yeah. arcadey fun shooters. Yeah, I mean, I I was just talking to you about this, but it's like I, I don't think anything will ever like it will never be as fun as Splatoon just because Splatoon is a platformer and a shooter and it's you know and the everything about it like it's just it's so much more than what i think black ops is or i tell you call what of duty the, is. the last um call of duty game i played and i i Mine could probably ghosts. go i could probably it might it might have been is that the one where you could like run off walls and stuff uh, i don't think so maybe not the the one i played i'd say sort of did have a bunch of platforming elements like there would be it oh, would yeah, be like first like person type stuff. Having like a run, jump onto a wall, and then you would like run along that wall, then be able to jump off that wall and have like a little hover. So th there was a lot of crazy mm -hmm. movement in that game. But That's, I remember playing Titanfall. It had that. But yeah. Yeah, probably probably pretty similar. But fun yeah, stuff. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I would anyway, be all in. I, yeah, I'd be in. I'd be in. I think that's really cool. I've been out for too long. Yep. Because I got the Wii U ones, but that's it. So Now, I want to take this next news because it might be my favorite Switch game of all time. Okay. Xeno 2. Uh, wow, Xeno 2. Xeno Blade 2. You um, can't even say yeah. it. Boo! Um, you know, they had some developers come out and they were talking about the game and development. Um, and apparently, Monolith has a under one, like a sub 100 man team. Um, and during the development of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 about 60% of that team was helping on Breath of the Wild so now Xenoblade 2 development started when X shipped so with about 40 people uh, they made Xenoblade Chronicles 2 in about two and a half years I think that's, that's pretty, pretty crazy nuts. when you consider the scale of the game and I know Absolutely. Uh, you know the I believe they use the same engine Xenoblade and uh Breath of the Wild, right? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent on that fact. I, I'm pretty I'm, sure they do. Yeah. So it's like obviously, like they didn't have to spend all that time building an engine because they they were working within one already. But right, 
man, Xenoblade is so freaking good. That Wait, you like Xenoblade too? I love it. I love really? it. Perry, I'm it's in love. Weird. Since oh, Xenoblade too. <laughs> oh. Manager, I love you. I'm promoting you to manager. Oh, oh. manager. Oh, Mr. Strickland, I, 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 I love you. <laughs> so, so Xenoblade Two is is Buck Strickland to you? Uh, oh uh, yeah, I love it. Beautiful, that is crazy. Uh, forty person team, and it, apparently it's a lot better than X. So oh, so much better. Um, yeah. all right, I'll we got this... a couple things left here. Yep, I, I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna let you finish up with the the big heavy news at the end that I almost forgot about. Uh. This actually is hot off the presses. This news came out whilst we were recording. Um, Evolution 2018, the premier fighting game tournament. Evo. Yep, Evo. Uh, in uh, takes place in Las Vegas. They have like a big reveal show of which games make the tournament. Um, and Smash is in twice. We've got Smash 4 uh, for Wii 3DS? U. 3DS? Oh. <laughs> Could you imagine? Only on the 3DS, dang it. No GameCube controllers allowed. And, of course, uh, Super Smash Bros. Melee. Now, Smash 4 will, uh, the final, you know, the top eight will be on Saturday, and Melee is getting the uh, the prime spot on Sunday. So, good stuff for Nintendo being represented over there at EVO. Heck yeah. And I know that EVO Japan just happened. Yep, yeah, sure did. So, uh, you know, ARMS and Smash was over there, so. Yeah, unfortunately, ARMS didn't make it into... Uh, evo over here but that's a shame yeah you know what i could see it being a, a more niche kind of uh you yeah. know fan base and sure. evo is huge so it really is very competitive to get into that you know into sure. the tournaments there but uh i believe the fighting scene uh the fighting game scene for arms is uh, pretty strong still though even though yeah. maybe not necessarily as big as the others right right all right well our last news. Bring us home, Perry. Well, they have announced a Mario movie by with uh, Illumination, with, uh, <laughs> Universal. Yep, the same guys that brought you uh, Minions. Now, do you think they're going to bring uh, John Leguizamo back to voice Luigi? Hmm. That dude. The, I honestly, I. I am so curious how they're going to cast this because it's like, is Charles Martinet going to be in a Hollywood, like, huge production movie? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's. It's like going to be bizarre. I have it's no gonna idea. It's going to be so weird. And it's like, yeah. And is he going to voice Luigi? Is War. Who's going to be. Is Wario going to be the villain? If Wario is the villain. There's no way Wario is the This might be the best division. thing in the world. The it's got to be Bowser. But what if it was Wario? I I I wonder can Dream you imagine me, it's Bowser, Dream right? Bowser's the the enemy as you would expect, but then the plot twist is it's really Wario pulling the strings. And then the plot twist again and it's Rob. And then really the <laughs> real plot twist is when Rob takes his mask off and it's Waluigi. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, and <laughs> Nintendo, and you can just write us a check for for that plot right there. It, by the way, in all seriousness, if that's the if that's the plot, <laughs> slow clap. That's amazing. <laughs> that's yeah, one hundred dollars so, for both of this us. This is okay. So this is gonna be this is very interesting concept because this is gonna be the new face of what people think of Mario. I mean, I mean of of the mainstream. Like, this is mainstream as it gets. This is going to be going out to every, you know, hu- it's going to be a huge movie, huge animation movie, which apparently is pretty heav- heavily into screenplay and plot and development and stuff already. And but animation man, there's so is many expensive. Questions. There are so many questions that I'm wondering about. Well, th- there's you no know? way it could be bad, right? Like, Nintendo would not... Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I say that, right? I say that in the sense Wait, that... are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. It can't be bad. It can't. They never... 
You mean because Illumination has never had a bad movie and there's never just, been a bad Super Mario Bros. movie. I, no, I just mean that the last movie was so horrifically bad. Like the, the live action, it, you know what I mean? Like it was yeah. so bad that that no, had to I like, don't. I mean, come on. I like, liked it. I mean, but for what it is. For like, what it is, it's the most bizarre thing. Like why in the world did you think this was okay for super mario bros yes exactly yes. and like for the image of super mario bros it absolutely. was horrible but no, that's what i'm saying nintendo is so going to be so protective of that ip because it already has a track record of being bad movie right so it's like they could not have greenlit this unless if like it's going to be good like it, i'm convinced it has to be good well my goodness Worst movie of all time. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's like... It, I just... It, it's I weird. Mean, it's very weird. Animation you know? was obviously definitely the right way to go, because it's going to give you a oh, lot yeah. more. But oh, I, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't know, man. I just don't Yeah, know. I don't know. I don't know either. Like, I don't know either. I I, I, I hope it's really good. I, I, I don't see how Mario's going to be as a character in a movie. You maybe know? maybe he'll know. be kidnapped. So he won't have to say anything except guess, for when he gets saved when he goes, Woohoo! I mean, is Toad really going to talk like, nah, in the movie? <laughs> Maybe they'll just have Pika, uh, Detective Pikachu come in and star. Oh, man. <laughs> There's just so many weird... I just, I'm really excited to see where this is going to go. Now, this won't be for a while. Oh, so, probably um, th- two, three years at, at minimum, I'd imagine. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm still waiting anyway. for a freaking... Uh, Orlando Studios to open up Super Mario World. Heck yeah, man. We're going. We're going to go We're, I'm, I'm, on I'm, Nintendo World's... On yeah. Nintendo World Reports... Uh, Dying. We'll, we'll somehow get the... Yeah, on their dime. <laughs> Neil, I know you just stepped down as site director, but pony up a couple thousand dollars, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cover it. And then we don't even do any coverage. We just, like, talk about it on our next podcast. <laughs> Uh, anyway, PAX is coming up in, in a, in a couple, couple months, months. Yeah, about two months time. We'll two be uh, definitely talking about that as we. We'll be uh, all over that like stink that. on a monkey. Like what? Like stink on a monkey. Boo! That's yep. not nice. So, anyway, uh, let's take a quick break because we and got something we special back, on the other side, don't we? Yeah, when we come back, we have an interview with Jason Cirillo of Choice Provisions. Uh, look forward to that. Or don't. But you should. No. Look forward to it. Alrighty, we are back and we are honored to be joined by Jason Cirillo of Choice Provisions. Hi there. Hey, introduce yourself, Jason. All right, uh, you did a pretty good job just now, but I'll <laughs> I'll, I'll do what I can. Uh, I'm Jason Cirillo. Uh, I am a game developer with Choice Provisions, and um, I have worked on many of the games that Choice Provisions has released. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, Choice Provisions used to be Gaijin Games, correct? That is correct. Yes. Yeah, and uh, such amazing. We wear games as a bit trip. Yes, that's right. We uh, we got started in the WiiWare wear space uh, with the bit trip series. That was a series of six games, um, and then we uh, we did a sequel to Bit Trip Runner, which was one of our more popular titles in that series. And the Runner Two came out on Wii U and uh, Nintendo 3DS, uh, and um, now we are currently working on Runner Three. Mm, I can't wait. Switch. Yes. Heck yes, and yeah, uh, you're gonna love it. Yeah, I, uh, amazingly, uh, you know, I uh, Bit Trip is one of the series that I actually like really bought and loved on WiiWare, um, awesome. because it was kind of like the perfect price point, perfect retro aesthetic, um, and it was kind of like a, I played the first one and I kind of got in like, oh, let's see, there's there's Beat, yeah. um, and then uh, the the I, I got in like right after the the fourth one. Okay, so they go. It goes beat, core, void, runner, fate, and that's what, that's what it is. So yes, 
I had gotten at runner. So what happened is I, I, I got runner, then I played beat and then core and then void. Right. I think I, a lot of people went, a lot of people found void um, and then uh, liked, I'm sorry, runner and then liked runner and went back and, and started. Yeah. At the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I, um, and it's funny, a lot of my friends love the bit trip games. Uh, and honestly, they love beat. I, I hear that a lot. Like the, just the original uh, is so good. And I tend to agree. It's uh, one of my favorites in the series. If, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of like a, Oh, a rhythm based uh arkanoid pong I think pong yeah pong yeah. Is a better descriptor for that yeah yeah, yeah, a, yeah. It's a rhythm based pong game i think you could say sure yeah but it's and it's insane uh <laughs> very hard i remember uh playing with two players uh is a lot of fun and then you can actually play with more uh up to four players on the wii and you yeah. play with like the motion controls it was so good yeah, uh, man I, I yeah. can't believe I missed the Wii Wear era. Yeah. Oh. Um, so disappointing. I did play Runner 2 on Wii U, though. Oh, great. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, no, I Runner's great. I'm really looking forward to Runner 3. It looks oh, heck yeah. just insane. Yeah, thank you. You're, you it, it is insane. It, you, the, the best part about when people tell me that they're looking forward to Runner 3 is that you have, you have seen nothing of Runner 3. Yeah, and I, 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 I don't say that in a condescending way. I want you to be excited. You you yeah. haven't you have nobody had even even the people who have played it at the shows we've brought it to. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows what is coming. It is going to blow you away in 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 in, in, in ways that you can't even imagine. It really is uh, amazing. Awesome! That is so fun to hear. I mean, I mean, Runner Two was a drastic. Uh, change from runner even i mean drastic in the sense of it, aesthetic wise at least um and gameplay you know for for the most I'd part imagine scale as well because runner 2 had a ton mm -hmm. yeah yeah um yeah and, and also i i just something about runner 2 that amazed me was of, you know of how complicated the game how hard it is you know they're, they're tough games mm -hmm. I mean, oh, sure. the, original, the original runner is like one of the most hardcore games I've ever played. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, uh, Runner 2, it was so fluid. And I remember I would jump into that game and play it for 10 minutes. And then I would come back a month or two later and jump in and play and beat a few levels just instantly. And, you know, kind of jump. I, it was just amazing how it's kind of like a learning to ride a bike where it just the, the controls and everything and your dodge and stuff, it just comes right back to you. So. I am yeah. very much looking forward to Runner Three. So that's great. You're, I, I really think you're going to like it. If you liked Runner Two, you, you're going to just absolutely love Runner Three. Oh, I'm saying yeah. you're pumping up the the hype train too there. So yeah, yeah, I'm and more uh, excited. <laughs> I have to. That's part of my job. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So yeah, what is? I mean, what do you do at Choice Provisions? Uh, so Choice Provisions is a small team, and that means that uh, the people lots of different things and i i especially do lots of different things um i i think we've never really decided what my official title there is but i i consider myself first and foremost to be a designer um although i do a lot of i do a lot of art i do a lot of programming um i do game design uh i do um I do stuff. I do a lot of the the HUD design, a lot of the 2D art. I uh, actually pretty much for the most of the 2D art that that we have in our games comes from me. Oh. Uh, yeah, and I do uh, pretty much it, in some of the games. I've even done the music and the sound effects. So I kind of do a little Every, of everything. Jack of all trades, if you will. Yeah, I get the I I I get that term, you know, thrown around here and there but yeah i guess i guess that's what it is really you know so you're batman yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. no one will ever say no to that yeah. <laughs> no one will ever deny that sure cool well yeah. um yeah i uh there is a, a little game that came out i think back in 2014 mm -hmm. uh named whoa dave yeah whoa dave right on yeah uh yeah right on and that uh that game i i think that i'm i can't remember if i got it no i did buy it when it came out and then it was also on the humble bundle the indie bundle yes believe, that's right. right 
That's right. And that's when I was excited to get it on my Wii U because I had it on my 3DS. Um, this cute little, very addicting arcade game uh, where I, I kind of compared it most to like Mario Bros. Sure, uh, how heavily inspired. Yeah, and yeah. Unapologetically inspired by Mario Brothers. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Course, I'd say course. tougher though. Oh yeah, yeah, for that sure. That game well, is brutal, it, man. Except for it has, <laughs> except for it has uh, physics that doesn't make you want to rip your eyes out of your sockets. Right. <laughs> like, like, like Mario Bros. Oh my god, yeah. No, I'm a big fan of Mario Bros. Don't don't get me wrong, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, no it's, it's a it's a modern Mario Bros. Is what Whoa, Dave, I'd say, um, where you're, you know. Uh, eggs are dropping and you got to smash them with skulls before right. they hatch. Yes. But then, well, yeah. the skulls too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And then, um, yeah. And then you, instead of the pow block, you got the, the whoa block. And then that's, uh, yes, that's how you get tons of coins and yeah. Very addicting. I was never super good at it, but I, it was yeah. always fun right. to act like I was. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been all that great at it either. So don't feel too bad. Okay. With now with whoa Dave, is that something that like how did that come to be? Was it trying to mess around and play with that sort of like Mario Bros formula and that sort of came out of that? Or, you know, I, I just I'm curious with like an arcade game like that where every it's so reliant on the gameplay, like the core gameplay, you know, where it's you're gonna play it and you're gonna play it over and over again. Like how is that something that you you throw down on there and you just sort of tweak as you go along to make it till it feels right or yeah that's i mean that's exactly what it is um in 2013 is when i started developing that game and um that was a time when there was some really cool stuff going on in the indie game scene with like single screen platformers um and i got really um inspired by seeing what was going on and i kind of wanted to try my hand at my own single screen platformer um and around that time my older son had gotten a 2ds and he we just downloaded some nes games on it and uh one of the games he got was mario brothers and i mean i you know i had played it for years when i was a kid but i was watching him play it and i was like man this formula is really interesting and you know it's kind of you know people have kind of forgotten about the original Mario Brothers before Super Mario Brothers. And I just kind of, you know, kind of passively studied what they were trying to do in that game. But, you know, um, I, I thought, you know, it kind of got me thinking, like, I would like to make a game sort of like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, tweaking it and turning the screws on it over and over and over again was exactly how the game was made. Uh -huh. um, and there was, I, I started prototyping it um and you know i had played a few games like you know vvv and super crate box and everything and i had sort of I, I looked at kind of some of the things that they were doing but i didn't want a character that you know could shoot you know i didn't want a guy that had a gun because that just that didn't feel like my style and plus you know super crate box is all about guns so i didn't want to just you know do that but mm -hmm. You know, I just kind of started tooling with it. And my original inspiration for the game, aside from Mario Brothers, was, believe it or not, was Tetris. Um, mm. and yeah, that was like the one of the big inspirations for Wode was Tetris, believe it or not. And the original concept of the game was that the pieces were falling out of the sky and you had to, you had to, there, were, there was a U-shaped piece. Like if you can imagine Tetris shapes, like Tetraminos that had a U-shape. Um, and one was a U-shape. And the other one was a T shape. So you can see the T fitting inside of the U. Mm -hmm. so what you'd have to do is you'd pick up a U and then you'd pick up a T and it would form a, a, a square. And then with the square, you would then throw that thing at the enemies. So I, that was the first prototype. And the enemies just were, were spawning on the screen. And I, mm -hmm. it was really slow and it was really so much work just to pick off one enemy because you had to build this weapon you had to spend so much time building a weapon that you'd end up killing like one or two guys with. And then it just was like, it kind of, it, it wasn't fun because it wasn't fast and it was too much work and with very little payoff. And um, it kind of just went back to the drawing board. You know, I don't, I don't, I mean, I honestly don't remember the exact train of thought that I had when I was working on the game, but you know, eventually it just came down to where, um, you know it was like eggs and skulls i think it was like kind of a it was sort of a, a rock scissors paper thing that i kind of ended up with that worked 
um, you know, where it's like, you know, you can throw an egg at a skull and it won't break, but the, you throw the skull at the egg and it will break. So like the skull trumps the, you know, the egg and the enemies. Sure, yeah. So it was, it just kind of, it kind of grew from there. It, it, it was prototyped over and over again, you know, until I kind of got to that, that good feeling. And plus, I think the way Dave moves is also a big help too. We call it, we call it flea physics in the office. It was sort of a, a thing that we. Oh yeah. He does move like a flea. I like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, and he, he sticks to platforms, which was one of the things. I had a guy, I had uh, somebody review the game and they thought that it was an, an oversight or a bug, but it was actually it was totally intentional that when he goes up through a platform, he doesn't overshoot the platform, he sticks to it. And that was done intentionally so that you could easily, you could, you could rapidly jump from platform to platform without having to wait for the character to land. So, yeah. Yeah. So there was all little things like that. We just turned the screws on it over and over again until it felt fast and it felt right. So, yeah. Awesome. And, and, uh, so yeah, you released you released that on uh, 3ds and Wii U. Um, I mean, and among other platforms. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for. But uh, now we have the. Uh, are you calling it the spiritual successor or the sequel? It's not a sequel. Um, okay. it's the next game in the series. Um, the next I'm game in the series. Call it, yeah, I'm hesitant to call it a sequel because if I did a sequel, it would be called Rodave Two. Um, gotcha. Or, or something like that. Um, sure. Which is, you know, something that could happen, but. Uh, Space Dave is, yeah, it's, it's, so how can I put it? Um, space, uh, Woe Dave, uh, Space Dave is to Woe Dave what Mario Tennis is to Super Mario Brothers. It's just, gotcha. it's another game starring Dave, but has a lot of the same elements. So like any Mario game you play, you know, you get a mushroom, you have an idea what that's going to do. Or if you, if you get a, uh, you know, a star, you know what that's going to do. And mm -hmm kind of the same idea when when I put together Space Dave it was like well you know I wanted some of the elements to carry over like uh, you know what an enemy hitting the ground or hitting the lava will do and that was right. it's like it's like in that universe these things happen this is like the way of nature in this universe so like, like stuff from motive oh, carry absolutely yeah so yeah I guess you could call it that it's it's a successor in a series well yeah. see now I want Dave tennis <laughs> I wouldn't mind that at all. That would that be sounds awesome. A nice yeah. robust uh, single player RPG campaign. Boom. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It would be crazy if there was a Dave Tennis. That's a, I mean, that would be a lot of fun, actually. Heck yeah. I know uh, um, uh, F F Fabraz is, is bringing uh, the guys that did Slime Son are, are publishing a tennis game that's kind of like the Zelda. It's kind of like a Zelda aesthetic. Uh, and it, like you know when you're hitting this the an orb back from ganon sure uh, it, it's kind of like, it has that kind of an idea for it and that and so that kind of reminds me of that yeah that'd be sweet but yeah. uh for space dave can you yeah. i mean why don't you explain it to everyone i mean I, I guess if they're watching the video they're seeing it but for our audio listeners um yeah sure so uh, the, the idea behind these games that the, the we call them dave the dave games or the dave series even though there's only two games and so far. Um, the idea is that, you know, you, you take three or four old arcade games that everyone knows, you smash them together, you take the best parts of all these games and you put them together and you modernize it, you make it fast and frantic, and then you have a game. And mm -hmm. with Whoa Dave, you had Mario Brothers, you had Bubble Bobble, you had a couple of more obscure games like Space Panic, which isn't a very well-known game. Um, Maybe maybe some te uh, some Tetris elements in there, um, and, and 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 so on and so forth, and then you have Ode. Well, so we're Space Dave. It was the same idea. So I went and I looked and I said, well, let's take Galaga, let's take Space Invaders, let's take uh, Missile Command, let's take Gapless, um, and a few other Bird and Beans, Bird and Beans for sure. Um, let's take some of those games and smash them together. You know, this is the spirit of you know this series, and that's what we do. Um, and we, you know, we came up with this uh, vertical shooter, which is also kind of a platform game in some ways, um, because Dave is a, you know, sort of a platforming character, so he can run and yeah. jump. Um, he, he can still run and jump like he did in Woe Dave, not exactly like he did in Woe Dave, but, you know, he, he, he has those mechanics. Um, and you are trying to protect the ground that you're walking on from the aliens that dive out of formation, similar to Galaga. 
Um, but in Galaga, you know, when they reach the bottom, they just respawn on the top of the screen. In Space Day, when they reach the bottom of the screen, they destroy the ground. So now it's untraversable, if, if that's a word. It's, it's, it's ground you can't walk on, and a big lava pit forms. Um, so you're kind of trying to pick off the aliens and also trying to defend your ground. So there's a little bit of tower defense in there. It's not very rich with that, but it's, you know, it's got notes of tower defense. Um, and then if the ground is destroyed, you have the ability to rebuild it. So like in Woe Dave, when aliens do hit the ground or hit the lava, they, um, they evolve into a more powerful creature. Uh -huh. uh, and if you kill the evolved aliens, they, their skulls fall to the ground, which you can then pick up and throw um just sort of like whoa dave uh and you throw them into the lava and that will rebuild the lava um and then that just keeps going and there's power-ups um we don't have a whoa block in space dave but we do have a space block and the space block um we actually, actually originally did have a whoa block in, in space dave and it was no fun at all it's just not fun to have to blow out the hole it's like you just pass a level really and that right fun. right um so we did a space block and the space block uh, you throw on the ground and it has a beam sort of like the, you know, the Ghostbusters capture box, you know, <laughs> the aliens down and they be, they kind of, they turn upside down and then they work for you. So they, you kind of turn the tables. Um, so you catch as many aliens as you can, and then you can fire with them. Um, and that's a lot of fun. And there's, there's a lot of little secrets and strategies that are kind of, hidden in there as well. Um, different aliens have different HP uh, hit points and, you know, capturing the stronger aliens is beneficial because they retain their hit points. So, you know, they start taking um, damage from the, from, you know, the aliens themselves, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the stronger ones take longer to kill and, you know, you can hold on to them longer, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's got some pretty deep, strategy in it that you need to spend a little more than a few minutes with the game to kind of figure out similarly to woe dave if you just spend like two minutes with woe dave you'll just think like what the heck did i just spend five dollars on here but you know you spend more than a few minutes with it and you start to kind of it starts to unfold absolutely yeah, yeah. and that's uh and really because of it being kind of like a modern take on a classic arcade genre, Woe Dave ended up being seriously one of the titles that I would go back to the most because it was so accessible um, and it was so much fun just for really quick spurts. Um, uh, and like you said, it does, it gets surprisingly deep and you get your strategies and stuff. And then I, I try to stick with them uh, and then, uh, you know, and then everything gets insane. And then I try to bonkers mode and then, I realize I should just go back to normal <laughs> mode. Right, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, bonkers is bonkers. That's it is sure. bonkers. We 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 had it locked in Woe Dave, and we decided to just give it away in Space Dave. You know, because why not? <laughs> so, yeah. Well, uh, you know, you're gonna have those people that are insane. I mean, you're already oh, getting yeah. insane scores already. The people who I, get really into it with the uh, the high, you know, high score and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. It's all about score. These games are purely score based games that's really what it's all about um and if you know if you're looking for a score chaser with a good leaderboard with a lot of competition on it then i would say space dave is like the perfect game for you yeah heck yeah now i i wonder um when we're talking about whoa dave you said it was sort of you playing around you know uh prototyping it how many people ended up, was it solely like this was just your project and you did that? And then I'm curious, uh, you know, if the team grew in size to Space Dave. Um, Woe Dave and Space Dave developed uh, in pretty much both in the identical way. So what happened was uh, I prototyped both Woe Dave and Space Dave myself. Um, coded it, did the graphics, and I'm talking about the prototype coded it did the graphics did the sound did the game design the whole everything um did all that myself and then we played it we liked it and we decided okay we're going to put it to console so this is you know before i knew how to do this stuff myself which i'm recently starting to figure out but we brought a programmer in and that was just smarter than me that knew more about it um and then they were able to take my prototype code and code it um, or, or, you know, build it in an environment that could be ported to Nintendo Switch. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Wode for, for all the other platforms that it was deployed on. Um, so 
yeah, I mean, I, I pretty much designed and developed the game first as a prototype. Uh, and then we, we brought it over um, to, to, we had it ported for in an environment that could, could be ported. So our Space Dave um, was the Nintendo Switch version of that was coded by uh, a guy named Garrett Varon, who is a really, really uh, great programmer and who's also working on Runner 3. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how that went down. That was the process. Yeah, uh, and I've, oh, go ahead. I was going to say as a follow-up there to that, how soon after Whoa Dave did you know, like, we want to make, the, as you said, the Dave series, the Dave games, like, was that something that, you know, Whoa Dave was done, or even when you were sort of p putting Whoa Dave together, it was like, I could see this sort of becoming more, you know, of a, a, a series of games opposed to just the, you know, just a standalone. Yeah, um, it's, <laughs> well, I think, I, I it's kind of hard for me to talk about my own games and like, <laughs> I don't know, like <laughs> saying like, oh, this was super great. You know, this whole thing I did was awesome. But I mean, no, go for it. I, yeah, just, pimp away. <laughs> so, well, when we when I made Whoa, Dave, the original prototype of the game, I you know we had a team of people at Choice Provisions, and I kind of went off in a corner and just sort of built it, and then was like, okay, guys, what do you think of this? And pretty quickly we had major competitions going on in the office and you know the people that were at in our company were i mean to be honest they were playing it a lot and they were having a, a lot of fun with it and we were all like you know it was like big news if somebody beat someone else's score and then it kind of turned into like a thing and this is before the game was actually even released mm -hmm. and, you know we're all game developers and we're pretty critical, you know, and I, and I, I think we realized that at that point, it was something kind of special that we had going on. And, you know, we started bringing it to shows and then, you know, we'd have other game developers from other companies come to the office and we'd be like, Hey, have you tried this game that we're making? What do you think? And, you know, they were having a lot of fun with it. And, you know, there's a lot of yelling and swearing and laughing, and, <laughs> you know, and, and we started realizing like, okay, maybe something maybe something is going on here that we should <clears throat> pay attention to so we released it um and it you know did really well um it got really good reviews and it was financially successful and uh you know we we ended up getting some you know uh really positive feedback and it it kind of built this weird little cultish following it's no you know it's not like That's a awesome. It's not a huge, it's no, it's not like, it's, it's, it's not a, as big as, you know, a lot of the other, a lot of other Indies out there that are super like a meat boy or something like that, but it's, it's got a nice following and, um, dedicated fan base. Yeah. It, it has a good dedicated fan base and I'm surprised, you know, like every now and then I'll just read some, some random thing online where someone will mention Woe Dave and I'm just like blown away that, you know, it's, it's got the reach that it has. So that was at, it was at that point, I think after it was released, we were like, okay, you know, people are latching on to this. Um, it's doing something for people. So we should think about doing more with it. And then, you know, we started, we showed off Space Day. We announced Space Day. We brought it to a few shows and people really liked it. Um, and then we started realizing that people, like when we brought Space Day to shows, we started realizing that people knew what Woe Dave was and people had played Woe Dave and they owned Woe Dave and they were oh, like, Oh, this is Woe Dave. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happened. Like, exactly. People would come mm -hmm. up and be like, Oh my God, this is Woe Dave. That's what I would have done. We were blown away because for us, like, Woe Dave was a little experiment. It's like, yeah, let's just do this little thing and just see what people think, you know, just for fun. Because it didn't, it didn't take a really long time to develop. And it was like, let's just do it. Let's just see what people think. And if it sucks, then, you know, whatever. Um, and it people really liked it so we decided like well, let's do something else let's take that same formula um where it's like pick a bunch of arcade games that you know that we like and smash them together and try another thing and that's how we made space day so and that's kind of how it took off and then now we've got dave in runner three as well uh, which Heck yeah he's super grotesque and disturbing which is really a lot <laughs> oh my goodness yes. dave for smash i love the dave uh the the art for space dave and just in general the dis well, disgusting oh yeah he's just thing. a horrible character and 
and you should see him in in, in runner three. I mean, there's I there's cannot couple, wait. Oh yeah, <laughs> he is. There's a couple of screenshots that he was in the trailer. We actually remodeled him since that trailer, and he is oh, okay. just off the charts. <laughs> now. It's, I mean, I mean, absolutely. And and the best part about Runner Three is that there's a shop where you can buy costumes, and every character has their own costumes. And Dave has his own entire set of costumes. Oh, I was just gonna ask: Does he have like a, a Whoa Dave and like a Space Dave? Uh, or like a Dave? Dave. <laughs> no, we've got Dave, and there's actually, um, I mean, if you if you played Whoa Dave, you know that there's Dave, and then there's this other Dave who's blue um yeah isn't that the dave that's dave yeah with question <laughs> he actually makes a cameo appearance in runner three as well um, wonderful but, yeah and and not as a costume which is fun uh so <laughs> it, i'm very very i'm i'm not only excited but i'm highly highly humbled and honored that dave was put into runner three because um i mean runner is like i mean people love that game and it's got a big fall oh, yeah. fact that dave was put in that game to me is just like high high honor for me so i'm very excited about that that is really really cool and excited so congratulations jason thank you, thank you very much that is really cool um now i i i do want to make a suggestion for a, a dave series game and that sure. would be Do donkey dave <laughs> <laughs> where it plays like the arcade donkey kong oh boy so i think you guys could do something really sweet with that uh, we probably could we probably could awesome. dave that's so cute. Uh, I, I think the name is AV Kong. It's a bit troublesome, but yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I actually yeah, I, have, I, have, I have ideas. I do have ideas. I like that idea a lot, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens next. I don't. Know. I just I've always loved. Here's the thing. I I've wanted Nintendo to make a new Donkey Kong with you know good physics. Uh, ever since you know, for the past 15 years, I've wanted them to do that. So maybe you guys could just do that. Is make oh, make a step a, in. <laughs> maybe play, one that where he doesn't fall from one foot. You know. Did you play I, Donkey Kong on the Game Boy? Oh well, I love the Mario Donkey versus Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong oh, 94 is unbelievable. True, exactly. I want more of that. I'm talking but, about Donkey Kong and the Black and White Game Boy. Yeah, Donkey Kong 94. Oh, they Donkey they call Kong? it Donkey. Well, that's like the that's the how year it came out. I think it's right? just oh, called Donkey. Anyway, Kong. Anyway, that's a good that's a good Donkey. Kong. That's an unbelievably good Donkey Kong game. Yeah, that's yeah. a good. One. But I guess that's that kind of started a new. It's not as arcadey. It's more a uh, platformy. Puzzly, yeah. Puzzly, yeah, yeah. But um, sure. yeah, that'd be sweet. But um, yeah. So let's talk futures now. I, yes. There's been some rumblings. Mm -hmm. all over the internet mm -hmm. that whoa dave could be coming to the switch or you know and to me it's kind of a no death thing like i've wanted it ever since i, <laughs> I thought i was like okay they're putting space dave out they're gonna put whoa dave out like you know before or something like that it didn't happen but now i'm hearing about it uh, it could happen um i want it to happen um i'm trying to make it happen and gotcha. if it does happen, it would be pretty super deluxe. Oh, awesome! awesome. Yeah, yeah I mean, Perry there. used to be the biggest uh, 3D uh, 3DS fan of all time, and now uh -huh. he's completely abandoned it. So I guess yeah. the only way he's going to be playing with Dave yeah. is if it comes out to the Switch. Sure. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm yes. I'm kind of in the same boat. Um, yeah. Actually, I I I would really really like to release Woe Dave on the Switch. Um, but I, 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 we've had a lot of people ask for it. So you got the Joy-Con co-op. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, if we just, do it, be. it will be, it will be special for the Switch. I think. Yeah. That's my plan. That's my hope. Let's put it yeah. that way. Yeah. Awesome. Beautiful. Now, um, yeah, Runner Three. Uh, uh, when is the uh, when's that coming out? I mean, what's the what? I mean, I know it's, I know there's not a date, but right. when are you planning on having now? Uh, soon. I mean soon in the world of video games is can mean a lot of things right subjective <laughs> somewhere between march and april i think is sort of like the oh know. wow somewhere yeah. in, and this this is coming retail yes we we have announced a physical version of runner 3 um definitely coming uh, that's do you know if that's going to be uh day and date with the you know digital launch or is that i know a lot of the physical releases for you know indie games have sort of come out a little bit after uh, I'm actually 
we as a company may know that, although I don't personally know the answer to that. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Well, See, I, I think runner three would be one where if there was a long wait, I'd probably buy it digitally and then probably buy it physically again later. Yeah. I'm a, a psycho. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I wish I had an answer for you, but I, I'm afraid I don't. And the answer may exist, but I, I just don't. I'm, I'm, sure. I'm I, otherwise, I would just turn to somebody and ask them, but un unfortunately, yeah. I don't have that resource. So, yeah. Sure. Now, and then one last thing before we go. Mm -hmm. uh, have you guys thought about bringing, like, you know, the bit trip complete to Switch with the Joy-Cons and the, you know, the, the motion and stuff? I mean, has that ever been talked about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Of> <laughs> I mean, I would say that I think it's fair to say that with the obvious success of the Switch, every at least independent game developer out there is talking about bringing pretty much everything they've ever made to the Switch. Whether or not they actually will do that is right. another story. But right. certainly we've talked about it. Absolutely. Um, I think we would love to do that. What I'm trying to say is I want you to do that. That's what I'm trying yeah, to say. I know. I I, I would love that. I mean, <laughs> that's the thing. Like we, I think as a company, we are really passionate about the games that we make. And we really, really like the games that we make. Like we like to play them and we have fun with them and we want them to come out on modern consoles and we want to do that stuff. Um, you know, it's just a matter of time and money. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think there's nobody else who wants the, you know the pit trip series on switch more than the choice revisions people uh <laughs> it's just a you know it's a matter of you know it's all the stuff involved in making that happen but yes there has been talk about it we've discussed it and uh we'll see what happens and, and i mean that honestly like we we're i'm not just being coy like we really we don't know what's oh, happening no, i know yeah i just wanted to make sure before we stop talking that i wanted to Tell you that I want that on Switch. <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate it that. If it wasn't yeah. already there. <laughs> yeah, we that we want it on Switch too. Absolutely. It it, it really I know it it would be such a good console for it. Like it oh, really sure. would. Yeah, I mean everything it would, would be so good, and it it would be so crisp and on that big screen, yeah. on the handheld and just and you could play. Yeah, it's just it's perfect. So it would be perfect on there. Absolutely. Yeah, no doubt but. About it. What is perfect already on there is Space Dave, which is out for nine ninety nine, I believe. That's correct. Right? Yes, sir. Um, right now, so everyone can buy this beautiful arcade game made by Jason and and the guys uh, under the uh, is it the Mini Visions? Yeah, it's a Mini Visions game. Mini Visions is our little sort of our Skunk Works department at Choice Provisions, where we just sort of do silly little projects. Um, you know, and uh, Space Dave is, is one of them, for sure. Wonderful. Well, um, Jason, thank yeah. you so much for joining us today and talking. My, honor and my pleasure. Thank you for having me very, very much. I really had a lot of fun. The pleasure is yeah. all ours. Yes. Um, and where can everyone find you? A pimp all your wares. Okay. Well, where do I start? Let me give you my home phone number first. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah. No, I'm on Twitter. Uh, that's... Um, where I spend a lot of time, whether that's good or bad, I don't know. But uh, uh, on Twitter, is, uh, my handle or name, whatever the kids call it these days, is Robotube. It's R-O-B-O-T-U-B-E. Uh, and, uh, of course, you can contact me through our our, our uh, Choice Provisions Twitter as well, which is Totally Choice. Um, TotallyChoice.com is our uh, the website of our team. Um, and also we have a development blog for runner three, where we have, um, lots of screenshots and updates and things like that, which is runner three dot game, not dot com, but dot game. And, uh, yeah, we can, uh, you can find us there. All right. Well, thank you, Jason. We will talk to you later. You have a good night. Thanks. You too. Thanks again, Jason. All right. Bye-bye. Goodbye. All righty. We're going to take a quick breather before we close out the show. Alrighty, we are back, and it is that time once again, Perry. The end of the show draws not. Ooh, that was a long show. Sure was, but you know what? It was jam-filled with some great games, some news. You know, uh, it was a week. 
And of course, our guest of honor, Jason Cirillo, stopped by. And uh, that was yes. just a, a pleasure to have him on the show. Yeah, it was great. Thank you so much, Jason. Now make sure again to check out him and Space Dave, uh, that which just released on the Switch. Of course, you can find us over on Twitter at Talk Nintendo Pod. What is that, Perry? That's, That's Talk, Talk Nintendo, Nintendo P O D. You can find me ranting and raving about the Patriots' loss. Well, actually, just raving. It was amazing. Um, Case underscore Jets and Perry. We can find you at P. You can find me wishing John. Mahoney to rest in peace over at P. Berkham. Yes, rest in peace indeed. But until next time, we'll see you next week. Giddy up. And I'll get, I'll just do, I'll just, you know, I'll, our heart, I'll, 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 I'll,